Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. Saints, has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua. Psalm 77 verse 14 and 15 it's projected can we read together one to read thou art the god that doest wonders thou hast declared thy strength among thy people uh-huh thou hast with thine arm redeemed thy people the sons of jacob and joseph the bible says that God is the doer of wonders. Thou art the God that doeth wonders, not speaketh wonders, not suggested. It is an office in God. Among the many things he is, there is a name that he is the God that can do wonders. Hallelujah. Jeremiah chapter 32 and verse 20 to 22. If we can have that in Amplified that will be fine very powerful scripture when i found this scripture it blessed me in no small way and i hope that it will bless you jeremiah chapter 32 and verse 20 to 22 amplified it says who wrote signs and wonders let's read together uh-huh in the land of egypt and even to this day continues to do so both in Israel and among other men and made for yourself a name as it is this day. You, go ahead. Uh-huh, Israel, out of the land of Egypt with what? Signs and wonders, with a strong hand and outstretched arm and with great terror. 22. And you gave them this land which you swore to their fathers to give them a land flowing with milk and honey not only is he a god that does wonders that he can deliver men through signs and wonders and in case you know i like the way the bible puts it because many people will look at this as a historical book and say oh god did it before but he says he continues to do so not just in ancient israel but even among his people Exodus chapter 15. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And verse 11. Exodus 15 verse 11. We sing it in hymns, we sing it in our praise worship songs, but a few people have taken out time to look at the revelation that is in this verse. Let's read it together. One to read. Who is like unto thee, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like unto thee? You are glorious in holiness, you are fearful in praises, doing, not did wonders, doing doing is something you have not stopped you've made up your mind to continue doing it doing who is like unto you some people did wonders before but they died and it stopped it says you are not only glorious in holiness you are not only fearful in praises that you are doing wonders one last scripture acts chapter 5 and verse 12 to 16 acts chapter 5 and verse 12 to 16 
Acts chapter 5 and verse 12 to 16. Want to read. And by the hand of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. And they were all in one accord in Solomon's porch. We are reading to verse 16. And of the rest does no man join himself to them, but the people magnified them. And believers were the more added to the Lord. Uh huh. And laid them on beds and couches that at least the shadow of Peter passing. The last verse. Bringing sick folks and them which were vexed with unclean spirits. And they were healed. How many? Everyone. The sign is not the healing. The sign is everyone. The healing was not commonplace. But this dimension that every single one comes with a challenge. And every single one returns. This one is more than a healing. It is a sign. It is a message. Are we together now? Write this down. What are signs and wonders? Very quickly just to give us um, a little foundation. Signs and wonders are supernatural manifestations of God's power. Really, they are, they are miracle signs and wonders. Supernatural manifestations of God's power by which God demonstrates his ability to save, to deliver, to preserve, and to prosper his people. I'll take it again. Signs and wonders are supernatural manifestations of God's power by which he, God, demonstrates his ability to save, to deliver, to preserve, and to prosper his people manifestations of God's power that are statements they demonstrate his ability they validate his ability to save to heal to preserve to prosper his people another definition signs and wonders are tokens or representations of the omnipotence of God signs and wonders are tokens a token is a representation they are representations of the omnipotence the almightiness all powerfulness of God they are manifestations of God's power they are tokens or representations of his omnipotence now, all through scripture, when you read down from Genesis to Revelations, you see that the Bible is full of the strange acts of God. Signs and wonders, mighty works of God. Right from Genesis down to Revelations, the Bible is full of God doing mighty things in and among his people and through his people to the earth. The subject of signs and wonders is not a subject that should be strange to believers because Christianity in itself was founded upon this mystery of signs and wonders. Hallelujah. I missed one more definition. Let me add to you if you care. Signs and wonders are pointers to a dimension of God that he wants the world and the saints to experience. Signs and wonders are pointers to a dimension of God that he wants the world and the saints to experience. They are pointers to a dimension of God that he wants the world and the saints to experience. Very, very powerful. 
Like I said earlier on, the Bible is full of signs and wonders. The way God made man in Genesis, the way God made the plants, the mystery that happened in Laban's house with Jacob, Joshua commanding the sun to stand still, the walls of Jericho, the parting of the Red Sea, the parting of the Jordan, all kinds of miracles that happen in the Bible. The miraculous outstretched arm of God to restore the economy of a nation overnight. Mighty things the Bible records that God did in his people and through his people. There are two Greek words that I want us to just work with very quickly. The Bible is an interplay of a lot of Greek words and in the New Testament particularly, there are two Greek words that are translated signs and wonders. The first is the word semion. S-E-M-E-I-O-N. 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 It literally means a sign. An evidence of a divine commission. The word semion is a Greek word. It means an evidence of a divine commission an attestation of a divine message the word semion that is translated sign refers to miracles by which god authenticates the men sent by him and the missions directed by him give us acts chapter 16 and verse 17 to 18 we find an expression there Jesus himself was speaking about the church Acts chapter 16 verse 17 and 18 oh, did I say Acts? I'm sorry Mark Mark 16 I beg your pardon Mark 16 wonders miracles by which God authenticates men and missions not just men the man can be sent by God, but the assignment he's embarking on is not by God. So God would defend the man and leave the assignment alone. It matters that both the man and mission are sent by God. He says, and this signs shall follow them that believe. And these signs, and these signs, and these signs... He would have said, and these miracles, the signs are miracles, but they have messages attached to them, and the messages have to be discerned. They are pointers. He says, these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. 18. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick. And they shall recover the Bible says these things are not just miracles they are signs they authenticate among other things that God is with that individual are we together now a man can fake some of them but whoever has all of them working in him is a validation there are aspects of these signs that cannot be faked you see let me tell you something with Satan the operation of Satan is such that he can take part of a truth and use it to destroy. But the test is the ability to convey the whole counsel of God, not part of it. Are we together now? When Satan came and met Eve, what he said was not entirely a lie. It was truth that was aberrated. When he came and met Jesus, it was not a lie. But there was a motif behind it an attempt to destroy jesus so he says when you see all these signs happen to an individual you can fake tongues you can fake healing the sick but when a viper beats you you see that one that that one is not you can't pretend that one you can act drama praying in tongues you can't act drama of snake biting you and then nothing happens and you see the serpent he's talking about here is first physical then prophetic are we together yes 
first physical he says that i give you authority to tread upon snakes and scorpions not a little scorpion you don't need all that to kill a scorpion and carry a shoe and kill it but he's talking about scorpion wicked demonic entities that plague the lives of people per second are we together it is possible these are the same mysteries that the psalmist said they are arrows that fly by day that a man can be moving and something can make contact with your spirit man but there is an immunity that have been built like Paul they looked at him they said you have sinned against the gods let's watch after a while when they saw nothing they said this guy you are not you are a god you are not normal that's a sign there is a message conveyed in it that there are bodies that are terrestrial but there are also other bodies that are celestial and that even among the stars one differed from another in glory signs the second word is the word that is called terata t-e-a-r-t-a t-e-a-r-t-a that's the word that is translated wonders terata t-e-a-r-t-a is a word that the bible translates in english in the new testament as wonders and let me tell you what it means it literally means wonder causing events wonder causing events no wonder bishop Oedeko, um, um says wonder is what makes you wonder it really is the meaning that's the definition wonder causing events events that are so notable your pride cannot stand it you know there are things that happen and people assume i've seen this one before a wonder is what will compel you to react and respond over that situation there is a way god blesses you that you claim oh god i just give you thanks casually you've done this before just like it came yesterday but there is a way god blesses you that you become too grateful to keep quiet is that true wonder causing events that produce astonishment in the beholder wonder causing events that produce astonishment in the believer mark chapter 5 and verse 40 to 42 please give it to us mark chapter 5 and verse 40 to 42 wonder causing events that cause astonishment and they laughed at him to scorn this is jesus about to walk not just a miracle but a wonder the bible says they laughed at him to scorn but when he had put them all out he taken the father and the mother of the damsel that were with him and entered in where the damsel was lying we are reading to 42 and he took the damsel by the hand and said unto her talitha kumi which being interpreted damsel i say unto you arise 42 and straightway the damsel arose remember they were laughing before that time and walked and she was of the age of 12 years and they were all astonished some versions say with great wonder they were astonished with a great astonishment a wonder was released in heaven and the bible says there was silence for 30 minutes because of the gravity and the magnitude there are things that God is going to be doing in our lives, brothers and sisters, that people will come and stand here and not be able to testify. And, and listen, nobody will drive them because the silence is the testimony. That someone will stand and say, I, I have always known God would do this, but not in this dimension. When God wants to give a wonder, he waits till your enemies gather. He won't do it in their absence he allows them to gather and while they are talking and say jesus died they see the resurrected jesus they are talking about his death and he has risen no blood in his body but still walking wonder are we together it's not he's been alive he's been alive without blood say wonder he said touch me bring bread let me eat 
But the Bible said the life of the flesh is in the blood. So how are you living? What are you breathing? Do you have lungs? He said, I'm giving you another life. As my father has sent me. That there is a possibility that you are immune to certain things. If Jesus did it in heaven, we'll understand. In this territory. I believe the word of God. Oh. Wonder events. Wonder God has already done great things. Koinonia is a family that we have seen humbling dimensions of his wonder. But brothers and sisters, you are not ready for what God is about to do. Believe me, you are not ready for what God is about to do. We have seen God gather crowds without posters. It's not publicity. It's a wonder. It's a wonder. There is no single hand bill. There is no single poster to put in your car. It's a mystery, my brother. I have read church history. I have read revivals. Men are not idiots. There is a force that draws them. We have seen the wonders of God. 71,000 followers on Facebook not being on air. One with no video released. It's a wonder. The message is going everywhere regardless of people. Having self-appointed evangelists running around these messages. They have never been here. But they move from nation to nation. It's not a miracle. It's a wonder. There are statements in them. I am the God who can do as I please. Are we together? Wonder causing events that produce astonishment. Astonishment. Mark chapter 7 verse 37. Let's hurry up. Mark chapter 7 and verse 37. Mark 7 37. The Bible says, and they were beyond measure astonished, saying, he had done all things well. How many things? Let me tell you, when every area of your life goes well, it's a wonder. Because it's not supposed to be the story of people. Naaman's situation is how men live. There must be something in their life that has a K-leg. But my God is saying in this season, there's something I'm, I'm leaving the ones I have touched and saying where is the area in your life that mocks me I want to make a statement in your life they said he had done all things well he maketh both the deaf to hear and the dumb to speak he has done all things well done all things well oh we are wealthy but no child when the God of wonders shows up Look at what the prophet said. When the prophet was speaking to the Shunammite woman, he said, Watch what is wrong. I know the ones that are right. Let's, let's focus on where there is an issue. Do you want me to talk to the governor? He said, no, no. I live among my people and the servant discern. He said, this woman is a great woman. However, there is an issue in her life. And the prophet said, by this time, according to the time of life, I program a possibility in your life that you will carry a child. The God of wonders, not just the God of miracles. If you don't believe the God of wonders, get said to be part of this weeping holocaust that is humbling the pride of people. There is a God of wonders. There is a God of wonders. Let me tell you, science will fail men in this season. The theories that have been built for decades that attempt to compete with God will bring people to their knees. But there are people that God will arise on their case. And he will say, I have always known God can bless. That what God will do in your life will make somebody come and apologize. And say, I, I am sorry, I didn't believe in you. Let me confess. I, it's, I, I know you were part of Koinonia, but if they told me this, what God will do in your life, I wouldn't believe it. He said, I will walk a walk in your days. That if you were told, you will not believe. Listen, brothers and sisters, let me borrow the words of Bishop David Oyedepo. God is changing people's levels in a way and a dimension that will surprise you. It's true. It's true. It's true. It's not a lie. This is what God can do. 
what is the purpose of signs and wonders why do we need them so much so that God would declare that a whole year is dedicated to experiencing that dimension of him what is the purpose of signs and wonders I want you to know that signs and wonders have a specific purpose in kingdom advancement there is a role that only signs and wonders can play in kingdom advance a few of them number one to believers and to unbelievers I'm going to tell you now to those who believe who already know that Jesus is alive and they have tasted of his power and his unfailing love signs and wonders become to them a consolation of their faith in God are we together the purpose of signs and wonders there are many preachers that mock believers for looking for signs and wonders and they say believers should be the proof producers I agree but the fact that you are a proof producer does not mean you should not be a benefactor no matter what dimension you get to in God God still remains a God of signs and wonders to those whose hearts are open there needs to be a consolation to your Christian experience they kept seeing the miracles of Jesus in the nation of Israel and I thought he would say I've shown you enough but every time the Bible says his messes are new every morning why wouldn't he say think about yesterday's own signs and wonders consolations to my faith that I believed God I trusted him to move in this dimension and he arose in majesty and made a name for himself through my life that's a sign and a wonder the signs and wonders are produced on earth by God through believers but they are not just for unbelievers believers also like the the husband man being the first partaker believers are not only producers of signs and wonders they are also benefactors of the same To unbelievers, what is the purpose of signs and wonders? It is the physical expression of God's power, God's love, and God's goodness. Creating convictions in them and ultimately leading them to Jesus. I'll take it again. To unbelievers, what is the purpose of signs and wonders? It is the physical expression of God's power love and goodness creating convictions in them and ultimately leading them to Jesus unbelievers need a manifestation of signs and wonders from and by God through believers first in their lives and then through them to affect unbelievers why because they need to be convicted and they need to come to Jesus now please look up signs and wonders in themselves do not produce transformation only the word of God in partnership with the Holy Spirit can produce conviction because when you read in the Gospels they saw all kinds of miracles yet when Jesus resurrected the Bible says some doubted, even among his disciples. They saw the dead rise, they multiplied loaves, some of them were the ones who packed the bread, yet they ran away. So signs and wonders in themselves, now this is the balance, signs and wonders in themselves do not produce transformation. If all a believer sees is signs and wonders, you get a job, you get a new promotion God opens up a door for you you step into unusual levels of the anointing as powerful as that is there are people that will still not be transformed by it however however signs and wonders support your journey to creating convictions when you watch signs and wonders at work they probe your convictions and all the insult in the name of God and insult of the body of Christ all of a sudden signs and wonders bring you to a point as a believer where your convictions are strengthened 
and as an unbeliever creates in you the need to surrender your heart to Jesus write this down all manifestations of signs and wonders must lead to the harvest of souls and the establishment of men and women in the things of God all manifestations of signs and wonders genuine manifestations of signs and wonders they must lead people it must lead to a harvest of souls and it must establish people in Christ no matter what happens in your life if it does not lead to these two things then it is profitless the message behind signs and wonders is that they are it is a system of attraction much more than a statement God is making through it he's drawing the lost to himself and he's keeping the saints to be established in him hallelujah when people go to a herbalist number one they are not committed to the herbalist they go there to see signs they sit down and say mr man i have a problem do something for me and all of a sudden a chicken appears from the air and he holds it and keeps it down what do we call that that's not a discussion it's a sign and by that sign the two people were discussing whether they made a mistake coming to this herbalist and all of a sudden by that manifestation they find grounds to convince themselves that we're in the right place is that true so when someone comes for koinonia and while he's hearing the word he's wondering well i've had this thing before is this what is going to give us all of this thing what is all this and all of a sudden while he's talking a vision is open for him and he's seeing his barren wife with twins he keeps quiet by himself and he said continue the statement he said no i saw something that has challenged me it's amazing that when believers gather like this you would think everybody believes what you believe until god grants you access to their minds there are people who before they come for koinonia they tell god certain things and say lord you better give me a sign i've been i've, I've hated every man of god and i hope that i won't hate this one too and while they are sitting down right from opening prayer fire on the mountain some the sign is that they find themselves on the floor Ah, what happened they get up and they're trying to be arrogant and then it happens again then it happens the third time then they give up and lie down there and God says this is holy ground they get up quietly now it's not that God wants to just throw people is that to that person it happened before his unbelieving father or mother and then the guy goes back the next time he sees people falling around he says don't insult everybody there are exceptions God is still mighty he can make it happen signs I remember I think we were in Joss maybe this was 2016 or thereabout when Joss I was ministering in one of the polytechnics and while I was ministering you know the power of God people were getting healed getting saved getting delivered and the Holy Spirit ministered to me and said there are a number of people here who are doubting if this thing is really working and those people themselves are not feeling fine so i want to heal them now you see that's no longer a miracle that is a sign and then the lord said announce it first before i heal them and i said there are people here who are doubting this thing and it may not be your fault you came from a background where it's a norm to doubt everything that is supernatural and the lord is healing you now and there was a gentleman who got healed i can't remember what he got healed from very spectacular miracle and then when he came to the front he said honestly honestly let me confess if not that this thing has happened to me now i will go back believing that these men play you know games and all of that signs signs is is good to clap for somebody but when it, the miracle comes to your own house it be, he said that which we have seen that which we have heard that which our hands have handled this is the dimension I'm trusting that God will take us to because some of the things we teach it has not happened to some of us so you don't hate it but you don't exactly believe it when we say favor you don't hate it but you don't exactly believe it 
the anointing you don't hate it but you don't exactly believe it but when it happens through your hands or to your life you don't care who doesn't believe you again it's a conviction signs and wonders are important because according to scriptures I wrote down a few things here they have always been God's strategy an instrument of deliverance from oppression and slavery every time God's people are in any kind of oppression or slavery the instruments that God uses to bring the people out of it it's called signs and wonders one of our texts Jeremiah 32 from verse 21 to 22 it says thou broughtest them out of Egypt by signs and wonders signs and wonders are instruments of deliverance number two signs and wonders are validations to the power the might and the lordship of Jesus Christ signs and wonders are validations to the power the might and the lordship of Jesus Christ give us Acts chapter 2 verse 22 and verse 36 let's look at it quickly Acts chapter 2 verse 22 and verse 36 thank you Jesus ye men of Israel hear these words Jesus of Nazareth a man approved of God by what help me read on a man approved of God by miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him in the midst of you as ye yourselves know so Jesus a man approved of God signs wonders miracles verse 36 it says therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God had made that same Jesus that was approved with signs and wonders whom ye have crucified both Lord and Christ signs and wonders validate the Lordship of Christ they validate the lordship of Christ the Bible says listen carefully it says that the kingdom of God is not in meat and drink it doesn't mean you don't eat and drink in God's kingdom but it's not in meat and drink but in righteousness peace joy in the Holy Ghost is that true and then oh I, I'm not sure that's the scripture I, um, what's the scripture the demonstration thank you the demonstration of quotes that scripture for me that your faith will not be in the wisdom of men many of you don't know how to quote scriptures you are looking at me and hoping those in front will help you quote it you better learn scriptures <laughs> <laughs> see how clueless some people are I don't even I don't have an idea of I just know that Jesus is Lord that's bad that's bad for a believer don't, don't do that kind of less fair Christianity whilst it is not the quoting of the scripture that releases power but it gives the Holy Spirit the tools with which to walk in you hallelujah yes no the, the kingdom of God is not in words but in power demonstration of power oh that's it god bless you and my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom but in the demonstration of the spirit and of power and then it says that your faith am i right that's yes should not stand in the wisdom of men but in the power of god let me tell you something there's too much talk in the body of christ there needs to be validations of these claims otherwise a time will come when they will just classify us as noisemakers noisemakers that we say God can heal 
God can bless, God can prosper. Elijah called the people up to Mount Carmel and said, look, look, we've been talking for a very long time. The God that answers by fire, let him be God. Very simple. If Baal be God, let him prove himself. If the God of heaven be God, let him prove himself. You start. And the people gathered round and danced and caught themselves till evening. And Elijah mocked them. He said, shout loud, I'm sure he's sleeping. And when it was time, he brought 12 stones and put water and did all of that and called on heaven. And God came. The Bible says the fire came, licked the sacrifice, licked the water and everything. And it was demonstrated as a sign in Israel that the God of heaven was and is God indeed. There are people we need to silence not by argument and debate, but by a strange manifestation of the hand of God in our life. That someone looks at you and says, all these koinonia people is because you are jobless. Then God gives you a job that is the prayer point of someone for 10 years. And you become committed with it. And God says, it's not because they are jobless. It's because they love me. Are we together? Are you ready for these dimensions of God this year? Three keys to commanding signs and wonders this is very important this is where your your own role comes in there must be a part that shows you your own contribution three keys number one the first key if you want to truly experience and command signs and wonders is intimacy with God the first key non-negotiable intimacy with God through prayers through the study of the word and through worship listen during my retreat the lord spoke to me and said that believers must restore the altar of worship we have restored the altar of prayer but we have not restored the altar of personal worship very few believers understand the mystery and the power of prayer and we preachers are the ones who have caused it we have made it look like if you are praying and i'm worshiping and i can't hear any noise from your own end you are wasting god's time so we we pride ourselves in the dissipation of energy for a long time to mean that that is necessarily a sign of making spiritual contact no sir the ministry of personal worship in church we praise god in church we worship god but most people have been robbed of the revelation of intimacy through worship there is intimacy through prayer there is intimacy through encounter with the word but there is intimacy through worship there is no one man on earth that works mightily under the influence of the anointing that does not understand the mystery of the altar of worship intimacy with God please hear me God is not a magician this is the year you must engage in being close to God this Christianity of today I am close to God tomorrow I'm not serious with God and you say God is not you know that I don't have a job you must make up your mind this year that Lord it is me and you not just me and your power alone intimacy with God there are people who have been in church maybe some koinonia for years they don't know God they don't know anything about God where are you going? at a go church and when you finish where are you coming from? from service say you mean you're a worker in that church that's all we join honestly at least they do have small small that statement is an ungodly statement this is the year you will bury that statement in the name of Jesus Christ the average believer listen to me the average believer should be on fire for God not for the purpose of ministry for your own good let me tell you the truth the deeper and thicker the darkness the more you must define where you stand with God there is no vagueness no. you know they have this sarcasm towards believers that the more we are outspoken about our love for God the more we fail in life is that true? so this becomes the basis for being ashamed 
when they are talking of poor people they say this this poor guy who loves god when they are talking about certain so many of us don't want to show our zeal and passion we love god but when you come where there are other people you just say ah yeah i don't overdo god knows i do my thing even god knows that and then we find all kinds of scriptures in the bible that says don't know, be over righteous and say prove this that some of those things are are proofs of people who don't want to know god is that true if i come to pastor alpha's house listen there are certain rooms in that house I will never have access to until I get to a depth of relationship that qualifies me to enter there. Is that true? I may sit in the parlor there forever, but there are times that I may know him and we may want to discuss something very secret. How many of you have seen parents or loved ones or some of you when you want to discuss some serious issues? You just, out of five people, you call only one. And then the person enters and you even in the bedroom you sit at the side that the window is outside and you are discussing critical matters the secret things of the Lord is with them that fear him it's not just being afraid priority please let me drum it brothers and sisters that if you want to experience signs and wonders that will last you must work on your relationship with Jesus Christ. I don't doubt that many of us are born again. But I don't see the priority of the kingdom. When you are intimate with God, it will show. You've not, you read your Bible Friday to Friday. You are not intimate with God. Don't say it does not matter. Prayer until you hear something on your zinc. Then you stand up. Play one coin on your message. Altar of prayer. And back it up with one fearful tongues for 10 minutes and lie down. You are not walking in faith. He spake a parable, Luke 18, verse 1, to the end that men ought always, always, always to pray. Listen, this year, I know the kind of people Satan is looking for lukewarm and careless Christians to, to take like a prey. And destroy their lives take it from me do you know the Lord gave me a revelation during my retreat that surprised me he said son there are many people I wanted to bless but that they their prayer life cannot sustain the attack that will come on account of that level of blessing so I help them by withholding it listen this is true that there are sat every dimension of glory comes with a dimension of attack and much more than your gift God looks at your spiritual life if I give this guy 10 million naira and the spirits that eat up people comes does he have the capacity to sustain it it's not the issue of God give me God give me the Bible says God will never allow any temptation to be greater than us. And part of the way is withholding certain blessings. When God told me that thing, I started praying for myself first. I said, only God knows what dimension I would have entered. That God withheld because my spiritual life had not gotten to that level. Listen, if you are lukewarm, be sure of experiencing triumph and remaining there alone. But if it is signs and wonders, please upgrade your passion. Upgrade your zest for God. Not come to the house of God today, come two months later when there is problem. No, no. The first price. Are we blessed? Intimacy with God. Genuine intimacy. Create a routine of prayer. Create a routine of studying the word. Create a routine of worship. Those of you that God has blessed with televisions, turn them into preachers, not entertainment platforms. Am I, am I against watching films? You, you know my position. I'm, I don't, I'm not against it. You can watch your movie, whether Western or Nigerian or whatever, but let me tell you the truth. If you really want to press for signs and wonders, you better get a flash drive and put messages and worship songs. Slot it at the back of your TV. 
that sometimes you can be in your room or your house or wherever and let that sound of worship just arise you are you are creating a climate for god this is the price for signs and wonders hallelujah if in your group of friends you are the most spiritual it's a sign something is wrong with you because the day your spiritual life is down and you have no one to pick you are you hearing what i'm saying yes. listen especially for those of us in ministry this year schedule a strong backup system a strong backup system that while you preach and dispense the word of god there must be a system not just during retreat not just during retreat it must be a daily system that replenishes you otherwise you may not make the journey in the level of strength that you want is god speaking to us intimacy with god does intimacy with god pay my goodness <laughs> my goodness Acts chapter 4 verse 13 to 14 there are people who gave up their intimacy with God to look for money there are people who gave up their intimacy with God to look for power there are people who gave up their intimacy with God to look for fame no sir anything his presence cannot give you is not available now when they saw the boldness of peter listen and john and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men they marveled because ignorant and unlearned people should not be commanding that kind of result it says and they took knowledge of them what was their secret that they had been with that's the secret to their boldness they said it's true we didn't have the opportunity to be educated we cannot brag on education but i have been with him listen when you truly are with him it will show in your life you don't have to say see me no there is an aura there is a fragrance that his presence carries may you carry that presence this year listen i can know in a second that a man is intimate with god it's not by prayer it's not by having a husky voice there is a presence like a perfume it's a signature of the secret place i can hear you speak and i know that this is not your revelation you just read something online and you are preaching i can hear you speak and i know that mm -mm, this guy you may even work miracles but brothers and sisters covet presence covet presence covet presence has nothing to do with being a preacher converts the presence of god consuming fire sweet perfume his awesome presence fills my life consuming fire sweet perfume your awesome presence fills this place you are transacting business but there is such a presence a man has been oppressed cannot sleep in the night but because you carry a heavy dimension of the presence that person will walk away and lie down and find out that that night he slept with no oppression you didn't pray you introduced an atmosphere covert presence as a man of god you don't carry presence you are not a preacher you are not a preacher a preacher is not just one who announces a preacher is one who brings his climate his atmosphere into a place are we together please let me tell you this take it from me if you want god to use you please i can beg you don't give up the presence of god for anything in your life don't give up the presence of god not for money not for titles pray and say lord grant me the grace to be addicted to your presence lift your voice and pray one minute
Lord, I want to be addicted to your presence. Mm. It's where I find strength. It's where I find courage. <laughs> your presence. My place of refuge. My place of ideas. That's where I receive inspiration. That's where I experience the ministry of the comforter. In your presence. That's where I receive strength. That's where I receive strategies. Hallelujah. Some of the ideas you see by God's grace that we run this ministry with came in the secret place, the presence. Listen, let me teach you something about having time with God. Take this in mind. There are times learn to be alone. Some of us, our lives are too busy to know God. Learn to walk around in your room alone. You know the way you are talking with somebody. I do that a lot. I'm just walking and talking, Lord. You know, the other day we were talking about this. Thank you, Jesus. I can be walking like that for hours. I'm not necessarily praying like generating energy. There are times for that. But this is a love affair. I'm talking with God. Thank you, Jesus. And sometimes that mighty presence comes. Sometimes I cannot even stand. It is the effulgence of that presence that we bring to the stage. There are many presenceless preachers, presenceless prayer coordinators, revelation hackers who pack revelation after revelation, couple it together and hope that it will give power. God is not a herbalist. Please look, seek his presence. Without God's presence, what do I have to offer you? Because you see, it's not everything you teach people that will be new. It is the presence that makes it fresh. Presence. You want signs and wonders in your life? Please make out time for God's presence. I want you to identify the things that represent distractions in your life and deal with them this year. They may not be bad, but they are weights. Some of us is noise making. Noise making is what has evicted the presence of God in your life. Talkativeness. Choo, 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 choo. Take that time to the secret place. Some of us need to coordinate our mornings properly. Some of us is careless time. You are a young man, you wake up 11 o'clock every day. You won't know God, my brother. You have missed a rich pie of the day to know God. Many of us never practice personal vigils. You can do church vigils and claim to a personal when you are alone with God. Ah. The excellency and the richness and the freshness of power that is gotten in his presence. You are there spending time with God and God is winning battles for you. You finish from that presence and come out and you meet testimonies lined up like an assembly. Testimony after testimony. Many of us don't know how to win battles. When men insult you, you have nowhere to run to. Create similitudes of altars, not by building monuments, but find exact locations. I've taught you the law of consistency. Don't meet with God just anywhere. You wouldn't know him that way. No. God is obsessed with location. Carve out a place that becomes your place with you and God. If you don't have access to a house or a room, why don't you find a location somewhere? Let's, let's be honest with ourselves and be serious and make this thing work this year. Seek his face. And the effulgence of his glory will rub off on you. And my brother, my sister, your life will be a compendium of signs and wonders. Number two, the second key to commanding signs and wonders is faith. 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 What is faith? Conviction plus obedience. Faith is not conviction alone. That's believing. Faith. Is the name given to the action you take based on your conviction of who God is and what his word has said 
you want to experience signs and wonders you must believe God this year John 11 verse 40 John 11 and verse 40 John 11 and verse 40 signs and wonders let's read it together one to read Jesus said unto her uh -huh, say it I not unto thee that if thou wouldest believe thou should see the glory of God the glory of God are for those who believe God you must work on your conviction the foundation of Bible faith is understanding it is understanding that creates conviction you need faith to command signs and wonders you need to believe in God listen listen look at me many believers don't get miracles in their lives because we live in a society where cynicism sells where doubt sells is that true we are always thinking what if it's a lie what if it never happened what if this person were lying you better come to a point this way where you believe that everything God says he would do he will do is that true so if we say God is going to bless Sam come Sam that God is going to bless you it's up to you to choose to believe it or just say amen and then go back after koinonia and talk as if you don't know Jesus Christ is that not what people do after service they jump and shout and you see them praying then they start laughing at themselves when they are going back home as if they were acting bros I saw you praying as if that prayer is acting and then the person feels ashamed for being serious with the prayer why are we like this we're in church we hear the word and we believe it we get back home and talk rubbish and nonsense ungodly things did you hear that lady's testimony the way i was looking at her eyes i said she was lying what is your business if she was lying release your faith and say it. i can get the truth of that testimony instead of saying it cannot happen I believe God to move this ministry to a new dimension. I believe God to move my life to a new dimension. The mockers will always bury their head while God keeps performing signs on those who believe. The Bible says, Blessed is she that believes, for unto her, not unto them, unto her. This is a personal affair. There shall be a performance of those things that were spoken. I believe it. I believe it. That Lord, if you are going to bless me if you want to lift up my life and change my story I stand with you believing like Abraham the devil will come in with his rubbish as usual and say look I hope you know that there are many people who are being owed salary and arrears how do you want to build a house this year and then a scripture fires out of you they got not the land in possession by their own hands neither did their sword save them are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. You look at yourself. Oh, I'm 40 years. Will any man really like me? And God says, just wait and let me surprise you. And God will bring a brother as if he was charm. And just come and say, sister, let's go and see your parents. Say, if you are playing, don't play. Say, well, how can I be playing? Do I look like I'm playing? Let's, let's go and see your parents. And while the rest are laughing at you, in three months, you are settled and you keep watching their lives and they say ah this bad girl and God says never call unclean what I have called clean while you are there talking nonsense God is lifting people hallelujah brothers and sisters there are people today you are paying their transport that they will be the ones sponsoring people by the end of this year as young people I'm not talking of some visions in 10 years it is unto you in this kingdom not according to the preacher's words according to your faith i believe god i believe god i believe you i believe you so you have an assignment to build your faith faith does not grow by itself please listen you don't grow just by sitting down you eat correct you eat you don't ask the food which part of my body are you going to don't worry your own is continue having access to the food and you'll see that you're growing
that's how your faith grows listen let me tell you this is the year i want to encourage you avoid naysayers avoid faith killers you finish believing god and you finish three days dry over an issue and you come and meet a brother and he loves it open that in it let's look at you you said you are stupid this is what you are fasting about and they kill your faith we have been taught that there are some things god cannot do just believe god and then when you perish we can come and comfort you but not before listen i want you to enlarge your faith for big things this year don't just sit down and say god do this no lord i believe you i believe you work on my faith i'm ready to keep bringing you the word of god that will keep building your faith there are so many things we're going to learn this year but that god will grant us grace to believe it hold on mike listen please i want you those listening inside outside online let us stop double-mindedness in church this is what i believe we call it church mind i don't know where that thing is, is in bible then after you you come out of church we now have the secular satanic carnal and ungodly mind that has never worked why change your convictions it's better for me to know you don't even believe this aspect it will help me to encourage you than to join those who you are there you don't believe it but you are joining the group of people with convictions you will find out that you will never get the result say i receive grace to believe god say it again i receive grace to believe god and the key is to meditate on his word you don't meditate on newspapers and cynical statement online you don't meditate on gist we were having a discussion when i went home to see my parents maybe let me just add it a little and we we're discussing um, the need for god to help ladies in saloons saloon is one place that is a wonderful place for making hair but it is uh is is a is a chamber that can program unbelief now please with all due respect to hair stylists i love you please may god bring members to your saloon but let me tell you this let me tell you this let me tell you this listen this is the first service it's too early to be laughing anyhow this is the i'm establishing the word there are many people hmm, who expose themselves to atmospheres that are antichrist that is the real devil you should cast not just the one around in your village that has left sins atmospheres have been creating room for satan must you visit the friends if you don't have anything godly and serious to discuss must you visit them you can send them a text how are you it's been a while just to check up on you god bless you there are people on their way to church someone just holds them back and then they don't come the person has robbed you of an opportunity to learn say i will work on my faith sam if i gave you a property will you take care of the property will you take care of the documents if you saw someone coming to carry the documents what will you do you will stop the person the bible says guard your heart we are guarding land we are guarding gold we are guarding atm look you you guard your atm by getting a card for it you now put it inside a bag and the bible says guard your heart and that's the one you leave it carelessly guard your heart with all diligence we have guarded atm we have guarded land that we came and met and we'll go and live we have guarded houses we have guarded the little tea and bread that are around and made noise we have guarded cars we built a garage for car and left your heart exposed you see the wisdom of that is of this earth that comes to naught. please say i will guard my heart guarding your heart doesn't mean to fight people but to mark people who have a track record of killing your faith they just see you rejoicing they say why the joy say the joy of the lord is my strength 
say, I, I'm a Christian too. You better be real. That thing looks like an emotional, sociological statement. But the name is, is a faith killer statement. Hallelujah. Thank you, Sam. Number three, the last key. You want to command signs and wonders this year. Practice praise and thanksgiving. Mm. Thanksgiving. Everybody say thanksgiving. I am learning many strange things about this dimension of God that is humbling me. With all humility, these are revelations that God has revealed to me, but I am learning in fresh ways the power of praise and the power of thanksgiving and the power of living a thankful life thanksgiving and living a thankful life are two different things thanksgiving is an event you can dance in church carry your handkerchief and not be thankful i have a special teaching on thanksgiving a little teaser to it thanksgiving your communication of thanks must match the blessing given the goal of thanksgiving is to imp to create an impression in, in the giver that you understand the gravity of the sacrifice involved in giving that gift there are times that saying thank you is not thanksgiving it's too small for that kind of result if i give you 10 naira you say thank you i give you ten thousand, you say thank you i give you hundred thousand, you say thank you I give you 1 million, you say thank you. I give you 10 million, you say thank you. From 100 naira to 1 million, you are ungrateful. That thank you was only valid for 10 naira. You were supposed to make the other givings weightier in your communication of thanks. So many people just say, God, thanks. I forgot to tell you the other day. Look at how you saved me. And God said, That's the, Is that the way you cried? Is that how you cried? Did you just cry casually? You cried as if your life will finish. And I opened you a door. And look how casual you are. Please practice a life. Not a moment of thanksgiving. Feel a major portion of your prayer with thanksgiving. Lord, I thank you. Are you not the one who has delivered me from my enemies? There are many who would have prayed that I didn't see this year. But Lord, in their presence, you have honored me. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you for the other day. I was coming and a bike almost hit my car. I thank you. And God says, you are doing this to me. He said, God, I've not even finished. Wait. He said, what about your needs? He said, God, I know you are faithful. Just allow me thank you. And God says, you don't need to ask again. Your thanksgiving has multiplied your result. Please learn to be thankful. It is something that I have embraced. Thanksgiving. Complaining and murmuring all through scripture attracted the wrath of god not satan when people murmured before god it was a sign of ingratitude he punished them god you gave me bread wouldn't i have blue band there? and god would say you are a wicked servant i didn't just give you tea i gave you bread just because there's no blue band you are shouting as if you are you are hungry say god will i continue to eat bread like that is it not you that said the part of the justice as a shining light and God says look at your ungrateful heart what happens if I give you a bakery it means you will leave me and say God this was all what it was about now that I have a bakery it's enough to feed me live a thankful life don't thank God generally be specific count your blessing name them not ten by ten one by one Lord, you gave me five children, no CS. Thank you. How is it such a big thing? Lord, thank you. Lord, it was just day before yesterday. I didn't have food to eat. And today, I even had to fetch two tears and give someone. Because a stranger I did not know just said, you assign him. Somebody will tell you, God sent me. You won't turn back to the God and say, thank you. You told the messenger, thank you. And God that sent the person, you left him like that. Till you have a need. Say, God, the other day, how did I it escape my mind? And God said, what was there? What was there that it escaped your mind? Thank him. 
he gives you 10 naira say thank you make it a big deal god will say all these dances for 10 naira i said yes oh lord i'm dancing some of you are dancing not because you are truly grateful you are dancing because you have been taught it's a key to multiplication so you really hate God. It's just that you are just doing it. Oh God, where is my daily bread? Apostle say when you dance your way and you are done and God is saying, please stop dancing. Don't make me a fool. I'm not an idol. I'm not a cow somewhere that they lifted up. I am God all by myself. Let your gratitude be genuine. That you say, Lord, I know in this process there is a blessing. But whether or not there is a blessing, I thank you. Say, I will be thankful. Be thankful to God and be thankful to men. Some of us, we close the door of favor by ourselves because of ingratitude. Please take this issue of gratitude seriously. Jesus healed 10 people. He was passing and healed 10 people. He stayed there waiting to see who will come back. The 10 people were healed and they ran away. And one person said, mm -mm. We were supposed to die there unclean. But this one that God has done, this one will return. And he said, were there not ten of you? Where are the others? Take out time. If you can cry for problems, you should take out time to be lavish about thanksgiving. As a lifestyle, not just when it comes as an instruction here. Praise God and thank him. I live my own life saying thank you Jesus Lord I am grateful not because of what he has done Lord I am grateful thank you for the workers thank you for my life thank you for your word all through this year second Chronicles 20 verse 22 you can just write that as the scripture there they began to sing and to thank the Lord and to say for he is good and his mercy endureth forever and God began to set ambushment we have emphasized this that praise is powerful but it must be from the heart that's what makes it perfected praise ordained praise there is praise that is anointed it's called perfected praise there is praise that is rubbish it's just it's just selfishness in one minute while you are seated can you tell god thank you let's just take a minute or two to say thank you Thank you, Jesus. Some of you entered 2000. You entered 2018 grumbling. Someone died December 31st. But you entered 2018 grumbling as if the power is your own. Abba, let's be grateful. Some of you, you have been grateful but not enough to match the goodness of God in your life. Don't act as if it's a right. Thank you, Jesus learn gratitude to god and to men be lavish about gratitude take note of things that people do for you that you cannot do for yourself be very meticulous about it say i'm not that kind of person learn it you will close all kinds of doors being ungrateful you can earn a living through gratitude you can literally live off gratitude. Gratitude is a stream of income. Thank you, Jesus. Go ahead. Lord, you gave me a relationship and work out. Thank him. At least he gave you one. At least a guy was able to come into your life. Lord, I thank you. I have not built the house yet, but you gave me land. I thank you. Lord, I've not graduated yet, but at least I'm still a student. Thank you. We live in a society of gross ingratitude. Just take a minute and say thank you. How about some of you who have seen the anointing in your life in unusual ways? Two years ago, you were not like this. But look what God has done in your life mighty dimensions of revelation mighty dimensions of the anointing now they invite you everywhere to be a blessing men have discerned the hand of god upon your life it's a reason to say thank you don't just say i'm a man of god don't just say i'm a woman of god don't just say i'm a prayer warrior 
how about people that God changed their financial status no connection no godfather no godmother I'm showing you why many of us do not see the signs of God in our lives when you thank God it looks like it's a burden to you Jesus thank you how many graduates thank God they complain about no job they run their mouth from morning till night oh god won't you give me a job have you ever carried your certificate to put it on the ground and roll over it and say lord thank you oh, i wrote jam 10 times it's, it's a it's a dream today that without any sponsor i may graduate we live in a generation that complains lord i have a church of only 30 members but you have people who have discerned your grace and they are listening to you lord i don't have a job won't you change my story you've not got a job for one year and you've not begged who has been the supplier of that there are workers who have been on strike there are workers whose salaries have not been paid for six months in other states some one year yet god has sustained them and they don't have any other extra stream of income it's been the lord's doing make sure it is marvelous in your eyes thank you jesus thank you jesus hallelujah these three keys are the keys that god gave me that if we will focus on being intimate with him and believe him enough to release our faith and to back it up with a life that is full of praise and thanksgiving then brothers and sisters you are ready to see the outstretched arm of god his strange wonders in the midst of people there are battles this year that you will not need to fight mm -mm. this is i believe with all my heart that this is one of those years that the lord will say uh -uh. this battle is not your own allow me the egyptians you see today they are greater than you you have already done your own battle by worshiping me leave me to fight them that god will take you out of the battlefront and stand there and ask the enemy that has oppressed your family face me now you they may not have the strength in themselves let me give you 11 instructions for this year and then we'll round up please write down these instructions and believe them you don't have anything to write type it in your phone men prosper in the kingdom on the strength of instructions he says my son pay attention to my words incline your ears to my sayings do not let them depart from you keep them in the midst of your heart then he says they are life to those who find them men rise in this kingdom through instructions transgressors are violators of instructions number one very quickly in this year 2018 make up your mind to love and seek the lord passionately instruction number one love and seek the lord passionately I beg you in the name of Jesus Christ the son of the living God prioritize God in your life this year prioritize God some of you I congratulate you at least you are better than the way you used to be but you need to do more you need to move closer to God pray for me oh as you are going to church no love and seek the Lord passionately number two serve the lord this year wholeheartedly serve the lord wholeheartedly you are a worker in this ministry this is the time for you to pour your heart doesn't matter what department you are not a worker in this ministry find a department and commit yourself commit yourself serve the lord exodus 23 verse 25 exodus 23 i'm just running the instructions but i just felt like giving you a scripture of this it says if they obey and serve me if you shall obey and serve the lord your god 
he shall do what bless thy bread and ye shall serve the lord your god and he shall bless your bread and your water and i will take sickness away from the midst of you when you read 26 let's read 26 he says that there shall nothing cast a young nor be barren in the land the number of your days i will fulfill serve god wholeheartedly genuinely genuinely coming to church is not serving god walking in the house of god is serving god number three be passionate and intentional about bringing men to jesus be passionate and intentional about bringing men to jesus daniel chapter 12 and verse 3 be passionate and intentional about bringing men to jesus read it with me one to read and they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament uh-huh and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars even forevermore brothers and sisters your heart must be passionate about bringing people to jesus bringing people to jesus is more than just winning souls you are going to church you don't go alone are we together there's someone in your neighborhood after evangelizing to him another person will come while you are talking say somebody has come say it doesn't matter i can continue from where he stopped let your life bring somebody to jesus someone sits down and he tells you i look at the way my life is i say well uh, there's prayer meeting going on on tuesday once in a while you can go no that's not evangelism that's suggestion evangelism is my brother jesus christ is able to help you look at what he made out of my life and you talk to the person and at the end of it you ask the person do you mind that i pray and lead you to jesus christ some of you as i'm saying it you are even shocked because you have not said this thing in years it's not part of your dictionary a profitable believer is one who brings harvest of souls an establishment of the same don't leave people and drag yourself you are coming for miracle service you are coming alone your entire loved ones are languishing in in trouble be be a true evangelist do the work of an evangelist you know a woman around your neighborhood she has been buried madam please i don't have transport no problem i will pay your transport that's evangelism hallelujah let's be serious about leading men to jesus can i tell you the truth all that we do in this life will end one day i hear what i'm saying anybody that leaves this earth without nobody goes to hell for sinning everybody goes to hell for rejecting jesus that is what takes people to hell it is not sin that takes people to hell it is they are rejecting jesus the propitiation the substitute so don't sit down some of us our wives are not saved our husbands are not saved this is the year to vet everyone's salvation start with your household don't sit down and say it doesn't matter when I hear that someone has gone to be with the Lord, the first thing I ask is, did he die in Christ? If he died in Christ, I just say, ah, then the only thing we are going to miss is just the physical fellowship. But brothers and sisters, let me be sincere with you. If you die without Christ, you will never, 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 never be connected to Jesus again. As far as the Bible reveals to us it matters that we make sure people we give people business deals wonderful we give them jobs i want you to preach use everything use your looks to preach hello 
use your credit to preach use your life don't say me i'm not a woman of god i will keep sowing in koinonia please the urgency the church of the lord jesus christ is gradually fading in the area of conscious evangelism i know we make altar calls in church but that personal life we pray for people we intercede for people but we watch people they are not born again we don't care we call it being friendly start with those under your roof especially for those of us who have any form of influence nobody should be under my roof and not serve my god no sir don't say we don't want to offend anybody it doesn't mean you just meet somebody especially a non-christian and start harassing them no you can start by showing them the love of god it doesn't have to be one day preaching intercede for your loved ones many people drop prayer requests here car house wife husband they never write the names of souls and say father by next miracle service let this my father meet jesus number four remain joyful and thankful fourth instruction quickly we have 11 of them remain joyful and thankful this is the year that you should never allow anything kill your joy not bad report not anything make up your mind to be joyful regardless of what happens remain joyful don't allow your joy to be perturbed by circumstances remain unbending in your joy get up in the morning you sing praises unto god lord i love you while you are doing that immediately you get an alert the interview went and were sorry to announce to you that you didn't get the job lord is all right i know that this is painful but i thank you the admission list first list came out i even saw in my dream that i got admission now physically there's no admission and then you are you cry because you are a human being jesus wept but in the midst of the cry find a song of merriment number number what be strong in faith fifth instruction be strong in faith reject fear reject fear write it be strong in faith dash reject fear the fear of evil report the fear of death the fear of not having a man to marry you the fear of not having a woman to marry you hello it's amazing how people walk with all these kinds of fear brothers the fear of not being established reject it sisters the fear of marrying a poor man or some of these nonsense fears that lead people to do demonic things reject it the fear of your church remaining at the same level no. the fear of being destroyed the bible says and to deliver them who through the fear of death have all their lifetime in subject i know that all around the nation and around africa there are all kinds of upheavals happening reject fear reject fear reject fear for god has not given me and you the spirit of fear but he has given us the spirit of love of power and of a sound mind please reject fear be strong in faith number six this year 2018 be visionary and focused get serious with your life it's an instruction write it down be visionary and focused for god's sake get serious with your life let this be the year that children become adults let this be the year that naive people grow up in their minds brothers let this be the year that childishness is replaced with a life of diligence and discipline and maturity my bible says when i was a child i thought like a child many of us have are still calling ourselves children give yourself an orientation this year i will no longer behave like a child brothers sisters everybody behave is that true 
especially for those trusting God to settle down this year your life must show you are ready hello hold on Mike your life must show you are what ready don't call into your life blessings you have not been equipped to receive and maintain don't call into your life blessings you are not ready to equip and maintain sister if you are saying 2018 is my year of marital settlement please do the needful be disciplined jumping around comes to an end hopping around people's houses to gossip comes to an end why you are preparing to be a good wife don't see a child fall and you walk and you are trying to cut work no you are acting like a girlfriend you act like a wife correct don't worry we have a series oh i mean you are in for a buffet this year praise the lord and our brothers too balance 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 i love god but i'm suffering balance this is the year we will access wisdom from the throne to do well in all things balance praying in tongues and you are not doing anything about taking care of your family there are many brothers that are not ready to settle down being old in age is not the requirement for settling down it is the ability to understand the cost implication of life hallelujah so you have to be visionary and focused go and get a notebook there are some of us get more than a notebook get a room get a room get out of your friend's room and find your room trust god for grace release your faith gather some money and get a room of your own where will i get mattress start with a bed sheet on the ground learn the honor of diligence all this waiting for a job to bail you out is the thing that sponsors carelessness the power of god is released when you get out get out there are young people that should pack out of their parents house this year and there are parents that should call the young people and say look um i had the message apostle preached and i love you with all my heart i love you too much to leave you in this house go ah, daddy what if i die go and die there go i'm i'm I'm, I'm serious i'm not joking then certain levels of decorum will come then once it is seven you will go back home you are learning to be a good father is because there is a friend whose room you are staying and they are cooking for you that's why you can return back home 11 o'clock with no reason you are that is already an atmosphere for unfaithfulness you have a room you learn maintenance you can lock your room the day you forget and they steal your rechargeable you have learned you have learned responsibility through the things you have suffered and that is a good lesson because now it will help you to be serious there are too many children old children believing that just because age is going they are wise we have to sit down say i will be focused in the name of jesus so be visionary be focused you are a pastor settle down what has god called me to do not i'm an apostle today i'm an evangelist tomorrow i think briefly prophetic came on me what what are you to the body settle down you are a businessman what do you do i do everything no sir you will fail be focused be focused get a clear direction for your life lo i come in the volume of the book as it is written of me you can't do everything ladies calm down settle down this is the direction my life is taking oh i'm going to be serious oh this is what i'm going to do with my life i'm a graduate now I've not am I working or am I doing business or am I doing both okay what am I doing I need to be focused I need to buy a book and be serious oh I notice that every time money comes I waste it with friends we don't drink we don't smoke but we waste money it's still sin are we together right now when money comes I notice I'm a worker in koinonia instead of wasting money let me buy one suit and now start looking like a gentleman the day your glory comes you don't have the attire for it number seven in this year 2018 spend time building your spirit man and your mind 
spend time invest in fact that's really the word invest time building your spirit man and your mind buy clothes look good but brothers and sisters only buy clothes and look good when your spirit is alive and your mind is alive packaging without content should live your life this year all this spending hilarious money to buy things and prove things that are not in your spirit and not in your mind make sure that a life a fake life leaves you this year build your spirit man as a woman build your spirit man as a man build your spirit man through prayers the study of the word and relevant materials let me tell you where many of us have stopped prayers and bible bible is not the word it contains the word there are other materials that contain the word explained to be relevant to your future don't just carry bible and read any part of it and think you are growing no you need books that explain things to you get books get videos some of you may need to budget for a laptop this year you don't have a television yet budget for a laptop you can sell two or three of your shoes and buy a laptop shoes that don't bring anything let's let's be serious invest in your spirit let me tell you what will happen many people who are used to packaging will laugh at you but i guarantee you your spirit and your mind like power twins will return everything you are paying for now a thousand times number what number eight pay attention to your health and your physical well-being please write it down when God gave me this word I repented a thousand times before God before even jotting it down pay attention to your health and your physical well-being you can't pay attention to your spirit pay attention to your mind and the body that will keep them here you are careless with it that means you are ready to exist so pay attention to your health paying attention to your health is not buying hilariously expensive creams that are beyond your power now that's not paying attention to your health you can start at whatever level you have you are now instead of buying all kinds of things you can buy fruits natural things correct yes instead of taking five coca-cola in a day buy carrots buy apple watermelon meet the welfare after the service for any information that can help you on your health let's let's walk as if we want to live long exercise truly speaking exercise god challenged me on these things and i will tell you as he did for me exercise take advantage of your life your health work on it Believers are careless with their health. We allow all kinds of sicknesses come. You are feeling sharp pains around your body. I'm a man of faith. But what is wrong with looking at someone and say, oh, there's a sharp pain? No, just to verify, okay, this and that. Oh, we notice, wow. Um, we found out that there's something there. Okay, so this is what the enemy wants to put in my body. Let's work together. But many believers will go on and be talking things that can be managed at infancy. Now later gets to a complicated case and they deny men of God sleep with disturbance because of something that wisdom could manage. Please take your health seriously. You know when you are sick, God gave us brains. You know your body before and during sickness. Something is wrong. Deal with it. Take care of your body. Take care of your health. Number, number nine. Press for financial freedom. Press for financial freedom. Pay attention to the details that will empower you. I beg you in the name of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, do not allow anybody trivialize to your life. 
the relevance of being financially free if it is God you want to serve you want to have time for God your family and your destiny press for financial freedom we have a lot of teachings on that wise that will come this year there already are teachings get financial dominion get the wealthy place other auxiliary teachings success systems the gift of men activating seasons of favor activating seasons of breakthrough settle down with it I understand the media is working on a dedicated web page to arrange some of the sermons topically so that it's easy they make it easy if you are looking for topics on finances they are all the messages there so you can download them believers poverty will distract us from living a fruitful life i repeat poverty will distract us lack will distract us living from hand to mouth will never allow us grow spiritually and live a life of health and soundness depression is eating up christians tongue-talking christians because they have to worry about where tea and bread will come from by the grace of god god has empowered us as leaders in this ministry with enough intelligence to be able to contribute and bring supply i am a balanced man of god i don't believe in people getting anointed and healing the sick and remaining poor why choose when everything is, the, is in the same table it is the life of god please and please especially our dear brothers let us trust god to press towards financial freedom don't say i'm too young don't say God will make a way. Just like a callous, irresponsible statement. Let's settle down and trust God to work our salvation. Financially speaking, in fear and trembling. You don't work out your finances by hustling. This is the year when hustlers will pay for it. Doing everything in the strength of the flesh. No, thou shalt hear a voice from behind. The secret to financial prosperity is not business. I've told you, the secret to financial prosperity is not a job. The secret to financial prosperity is understanding. Understanding. That is the first thing you seek. Understanding first. Getting a job and doing business is giving your understanding a physical expression to now deliver the results. There are many people doing business, getting jobs with no understanding. We live in an economy that many of us do not understand God's financial system. And we are paying for it dearly. Please press for financial freedom this year. Start with the teachings. Listen to them again and again. The work has been done for many of us. If you pay attention to Koinonia's teachings on finances, if that's the only thing you study alone, I guarantee you, you'll be successful. Number 10. Walk in love and be at peace with all men. Walk in love and be at peace with all men. Brothers and sisters, this is the year when all black books must be torn into pieces. Say amen. amen. The, the books that we have allowed the devil to give us, all this compendium of enemies, all this attitude of cynicism, love and peace is therapeutic. This should be the year for intentional reconciliation. It will be costly to spend your life and your time being at loggerheads with people be having love and peace will require you learning how to speak to men with honor there are many auxiliary additions to it it does not mean that you just live in love and peace there are some of us your current mindset does not have provision for peace because the way you communicate is pungent and destructive we must learn to culture our words through understanding it is part of the press for living a life walking in love and peace with all men don't look down on anybody don't criticize anybody and say your father is this you people are poor you people are rich you are this tribe you are that tribe uh -uh. i am your senior in secondary school you are my junior in... have mutual respect one for another don't be the one receiving all the respect and having people bowing to you and you're not reciprocating. 
Living in love and peace will require you learning people's skills. Understanding the psychological composition of living with people. Don't run somebody down and tear somebody down and think it does not matter. You look at a lady and insult her, lambast her from head to toe. And then expect that she would not be at loggerheads. Jealousy, what of gossiping? Hopping from place to place to talk about people. Bringing into your discussion matters of people that are not your concern. All these things must be well edited this year. So that we can live in love and peace. And then mark people. Mark their areas of vulnerability. And create a system to relate with them. Without being harmed by their vulnerability. There are people who will never stop gossiping. So you learn when best to see them. Greet them in church. Don't go to their house. Because it's obvious that going to their house is going to create a platform for gossiping. Let the meeting place be church and church alone. Are we together? Finally, love the body of Christ. The last instruction I will give you for this year. Genuinely love the body of Christ. Never criticize. Never castigate any man of God. Never castigate any ministry. Don't join bloggers to tear down men of God. Doesn't mean that men of God and ministries are perfect. We all are not perfect. But then you cannot sow that seed of being the one to be destroying a man's destiny and a man's church, a man's ministry. Whether it was your former church, your present church, your former pastor, your present pastor, koinonia, any church, a church in Nigeria, a church in diaspora, it doesn't matter where. Always see the light in the church. In spite of the weakness of the body, Christ is still in the midst of her. Let this be the year. There is a sin that many believers are committing. It's called the sin of fighting against the body. If nobody has told you it's sin, I want you to know that it is sin. Fighting the body of Christ through ill-spoken words, fighting a man's church, fighting a man's whatever, getting down intentionally to destroy the work of God because of poor and pungent communications is sin. And it's a very strange kind of sin. Because it brings almost instant consequences. For this cause, many are weak. For this cause, many are sick. And for this cause, many do sleep. What is their sin? Not discerning the body. Hallelujah. Ladies and gentlemen, God has announced to us that this is a year of signs and wonders. I believe it. Hallelujah. Now, I want to make an altar call. Gone are the days where people just cajole people. You know, when people come like this, I know many of you have heard of the miracles. Many of you will experience it. God wants us to experience it. But let me tell you this. I have noticed that most of those who live long are not miracle workers. In fact, most healing evangelists did not cross 80. Yes, it's true. Those who really, really enjoyed the grace for longevity are people who were interested in the souls of people. Hallelujah. Now, nothing wrong with miracles. We're going to be experiencing the hand of God shortly. But it came strong upon I've been concerned about the fact that there are people who are really going to hell. It's not a lie. It's true. Whether you believe it or not, it's not the issue. I can argue that there's no oxygen in the air. It does not stop it. There are some of you looking at me right now. The overflow, the truth of the matter is that at your current state without missing words it is true that it is not heaven you are going to the goal is not to scare you this is not the issue of scaring it is the truth there's nothing to scare you about it is true and books were opened and another book was opened which was the book of life listen carefully whosoever's name 
It's on earth yet that we celebrate people, Apostle Joshua Selman, who so ever's name was not found. He was not asked why his name was not there. If your name was not there, that's the end of it. Are we together? Listen, look, this is a very serious, serious issue. There has to come a time in a man's life when you break your pride and say, Jesus, I need you. I don't care whether you have been a preacher for donkey years. I'm not asking you how many sick bodies you healed. I'm not asking you what name your members call you. Are we together? There are people outside overflow one, two, three. The truth is there are people who need Jesus Christ. And a day is going to come whether we like it or not that day the very judge of the earth is coming is coming if he said it in his word then it is true mm -hmm. come out and be serious with god be serious with god it's amazing how people come out for altar call they come out for altar call and you see them playing around and you know they are not serious i'm not saying you must cry but there is an attitude of seriousness you don't play games with god are we together i want you to run to jesus like there's fire on the mountain because there really is one two Apostle, I'm ready to break my pride and humble myself. It's not a call to condemnation. Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, make your way. I've cried for my own life. My own life as a man of God. I've cried and rolled in the presence of God, crying for my own life. So don't, don't think that this is just some showmanship. Three, make your way. It's not by force. It's not compulsory. You can choose to sit down. But you can choose to say, let tonight be that night. Lord, you have to win this war over my life. Four. The Holy Spirit is still speaking to people. You may have money. You may have anointing. You may have cars. But let me tell you this. The Bible says, if your hope is only in this life, you are of all men of all politicians, of all businessmen, of all men of God miserable. There has to be a cry from your heart. Lord, I need you is a sign of humility. Is there someone still joining them? Very quickly, I want to pray. Your coming to Jesus means I am ready to close the door to all the friends and personalities in my life that are not ready to head my direction. Your coming to Jesus is a revelation that Lord, I am ready to be serious with you. It's not just you are coming as a preamble to receiving a miracle and then you run back. No. In plenty and in none, leaving you is no longer an option in my life. Hallelujah. I want to lead you. Some of you are crying. Let me tell you this. If you have any loved one who is not saved, I hope their names are in your prayer request. Because I know that some of us, if I ask you what is on your prayer request now, the only thing is wife, husband, promotion. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. But let me tell you this. It's, it's funny, but from heaven, you will still see your loved ones in hell. You will know they are the ones. It's not that you are going to look at them and say, I don't know, I don't. It's a lie. You will know that this one is my mother. This one. Now, you can't do anything about those who have gone. But there are people now you know in your neighborhood around your life. It is the Lord's desire that all men be saved. Please, if you are a pastor here, take the issue of soul winning seriously. Be careful. All these things we learn around in the name of mentorship. I believe in men. Be careful. Many people are veering off. There is, a, there is a path that brings power and grace. At the end of your life, you don't want to be a wise master builder. Be, be careful. The flamboyant does not necessarily mean God is there. Be careful. 
especially for some of us who are younger ministers we must be wise you don't just swallow everything hook line and sinker just because it is being done no sir no sir no sir no sir there are churches where an altar call is not made for more than two years then one day they organize one hilarious pretentious revival and then just draw one or two people it's a joke it's a joke more than healing more than miracles more than getting a job more than all of this is the eternal destiny of men i am interested in knowing that i'm not praying for someone going to hell it's a waste i'm interested in knowing that i'm not teaching someone a principle to prosper when he's already gone to hell it's a waste I will teach you about the finances and the kingdom life when we know that your eternal destiny is secure. Those of us who are standing, I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, just one prayer before I pray for them. Lord, make me serious with you. Make me serious with you. Please pray. It's a very serious prayer. There are some of us, you are not going to hell. But the truth of the matter is you are not serious with God. No. Mm -mm. There's nothing about God that, that can steal your passion. It's not priority. You see people function in the house of God and you say, oh, these ones, it's because they are called into ministry. There's no such thing as that. It's your hunger. Especially for some of us sisters, we have to pray, Lord, make me serious with you. I don't care how many men like you. I don't care what they have told you. If you are not serious with God, your life is in shambles. It's true. Lord, make me serious with you. Let nothing else sustain the ability to take your place in my life. That's a very good prayer. Hallelujah. Come live in me Oh my Lord Take hold Come live in me And I will rise Hallelujah You are a parent, yeah? When your children get to the age of discretion The moment they can think and they can understand Lead them to Jesus consciously it is very responsible lead them to jesus if you have not done so as you go back home don't just say my children are smart call them preach the gospel to them the moment they are, they can think they should be born again please be take let nobody stay in your roof you have a neighbor that is squatting with you he's not serious it doesn't matter no it does no it does no, it does. They can choose to reject Jesus. That's all right. No one goes to hell because he's a sinner. Everybody goes to hell because he rejected Jesus. That is the sin that takes men to hell. I rejected him. I had a choice, but I rejected him. Jesus, carry your load and walk out of my life. Those of you in front here, I truly appreciate you whatever you have in this life if jesus is not above it is useless let me just tell you the truth i want to lead you in an honest prayer i know some of you are crying overflow one two three those online please listen i'm not asking you whether you're a business mogul i'm not asking you whether you have how many degrees all those things are useless when you are no longer here I'm going to lead you in an honest prayer and I want you to pray from the depth of your heart. Listen to what you are saying and pray it loud. Are you ready now? Say after me with all your heart, passionately, Lord Jesus. 
I love you with all my heart this night I make up my mind and I make a commitment to serve you and to live for you from today till eternity I declare that Jesus is Lord of my life I declare that my sins are forgiven I declare that the life of God eternal life is mine today Holy Spirit I receive you as the life of God in my spirit I declare that I'm a child of God forever let me pray for you father I thank you for these ones they have unashamedly come the Bible says that if you are ashamed of me before men I'll be ashamed of you before my father Jesus speaking Lord these ones have come opening their hearts genuinely to receive of your grace I ask you oh God you who is the helper of us all help them I declare your sins forgiven I declare that the righteousness of God is at work in you the grace to live a victorious Christian life the grace for passion and intimacy with God is released upon you in the name of Jesus Christ every pain and every legal access the devil has over your life is hereby broken forever in the name of Jesus Christ amen and amen I congratulate every one of you now listen I know that some of you are rededicating your life to Christ there are a number of you those in here I just want you to walk out this way and then the various overflows I know that there are people attending to them they will have your details I praise you very quickly and you return back to join us in the service I salute you thank you so much for your courage your life will never be the same God bless you please direct them make sure someone is directing them make sure someone is directing them hallelujah amen please sit down hallelujah there are two ministries that I believe will be reignited in a fresh dimension two very great anointings I really believe with all my heart and and it's been confirmed from different people seasoned veterans of the gospel across the earth number one is the healing ministry i believe that the church has lost a major dimension of the healing ministry it's true even some of us that supposedly walk in it the truth is that most people have not experienced the full import of the healing ministry the healing ministry I'm going to be showing you a few things and then we'll pray we'll get to the business of the night the healing ministry is very important it played a major role the challenge was that most of the healing evangelists got to a point where they were carried away by the healing and no longer Christ and his purposes because the healing ministry is a means is a sign that points men to Jesus it's possible that because of the charismatism around the healing ministry you can veer off and your whole focus becomes the miraculous and not the Christ himself the second ministry that I believe will be experienced is the ministry of wealth and abundance it's true this wealth transfer that you've heard people say I believe that God has suspended that dimension for a reason because as a body we are not yet ready for that dimension the our perspectives about kingdom wealth and finance does not warrant God releasing that level of blessings because for many of us our hearts are still corrupt over the idea of money are we together the average person's idea about money is just some kind of um, 
it, it's just a, a quest to get and buy nice clothes and nice cars and prove that I am successful. There is a place for that, but if that is the scope of your idea, then you do not need any wealth transfer. Are we together? Yes. So God must first walk upon our hearts. It's the same way years ago there was a very strange manifestation of a lot of things that happened in Zaria. Angelic feathers, gold dust, silver dust. You know, people started having these strange encounters. And one, I remember one night the Lord told me, he said, I'm withdrawing this experience because it's leading to idolatry. It didn't reach one month and that experience was withdrawn. People will go to pray and for hours, all they are doing is checking their hands to see if there's any gold or silver to use it as an evidence to validate spirituality. And God said, no, if I don't take it away, one demon will give it an innocent prayer warrior a feather and he will carry it and idolize it in his room until he begins to mislead another group of people and so god withdrew that experience god only releases experiences to people and territories where there is a level of maturity and discernment he knows that when this reality reaches the people they will not abuse it until now as i speak to you there are people who don't understand the purpose of money and it is being abused and so God will not release it until the body is taught. The money is safer with Bill Gates. It's safer with all of these people than it is with preachers and pastors. Because they have worked on their minds. They are better treasurers for God than us. So all, it is true that there is a wealth transfer coming. But not, not some money monger kind of thing. It won't come that way. Anyway, I just thought to share that. Let's look at the ministry of Jesus. Luke chapter 6. I study the Gospels a lot because the ministry of Jesus inspires me. He's the greatest model that I have. And I like to, I like to study his idea. What did he do? What was captured in his ministry? Luke chapter 6 and verse 17 to 19. Luke chapter 6 verse 17 to 19 this is Jesus now having the sermon on the mount okay I'll just read it from here and he came down with them and stood in the plain and the company of the disciples a great multitude of people listen out of all Judea and Jerusalem and from the sea coast of Tyre and Sidon who came to hear now listen carefully the people came to hear amplified says to listen to him he came to hear him and to be healed there is a relationship between hearing and being healed they didn't just come to be healed they came to hear and to be healed verse 18 or still verse 17 to be healed of all their diseases 18 and they that were vexed with unclean spirits so we see the kind of people that came for jesus's meetings those who were sick they were sick terribly diseased they came to listen to him there was something he taught them about listening to his words and the healing power of god so they came to hear and to be healed the second category of people we see they that were vexed with unclean spirits and they were healed unclean spirits the source of their pain and their discomfort were the presence of unclean spirits and the bible says and the whole multitude listen sought to touch him why for there went power out of him to heal them. I love the ministry of Jesus. So the Bible tells us why the people got healed. That there was power. Other versions say virtue. There was something that Jesus had that would lead him into the people. And the moment it entered them, they would discover that their sicknesses were gone. Are we together? Acts chapter 10 when you read verse 38 Peter was teaching that was a salvation of the Gentiles in the house of Cornelius the Bible says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth Acts chapter 10 and verse 38 
with the Holy Ghost and with power. Listen, it says who went about doing good. Went about doing good. Went about doing good. So we see other things that Jesus did that were not captured. He didn't just heal the sick alone. He didn't just deliver the oppressed alone. He went about doing good. Breakthrough is a good thing. Restoration is a good thing. He went about doing good and then healing all they that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. Any ministry that wants to reproduce Jesus' ministry and, and by the way, I hope you know that what we do today is an extension of his ministry. Jesus' ministry did not end with his ascension to heaven. Are we together now? He said, it is expedient that I go. Why? So that the comforter will come. It is to your advantage, advantageous to you that I go. Because my transition will allow the Holy Spirit to come. Like the mantle of Elijah came on Elisha. Now that mantle that was on Jesus, the spirit himself without measure. So that we can partake of that spirit and become an extension of his ministry. We are gathered tonight as proof that the ministry of Jesus has not ended. We are gathered tonight because we believe that he still heals. Do you believe that? We are gathered tonight because we believe that he still delivers. We are gathered tonight because we believe he still does good. Hallelujah. The Bible says, as the father had sent me. This is Jesus speaking. The Father sent me. I now send you as the Father sent me. Both in terms of the scope of the assignment and the equipping. The Father sent me with power. And every time I spoke, something left me to validate what he said. He said, so also I sent you. You see, if the power of God does not back up his word, it's fraud. It is the power of God that validates the truth, the potency of God's word. So at some point in this service, we should expect the power of God to find expression. Not just in people, you know, receiving impartations here and they're wonderful. But we expect the power of God to heal the sick. We expect the power of God to cleanse all kinds of unclean people who are cohabiting with demon spirits that are manipulating their lives and manipulating their results at some point in this service we should see the superiority of light over darkness is that true at some point in this service god should be able to step over your issue to see that that 10 year long issue just dissolves like this just like that is that true if that happens then we can say with all sense of gratitude that we are an extension of the ministry of Jesus. But listen to me, brothers and sisters, if this does not happen, we are wasting God's time and we are wasting the time of God's precious people. That's why we prepare for all of the meetings, especially the miracle service, because you have not just come to watch a man, you have come to see an extension of the ministry of Jesus. You have come with your requests. You have come with your medical reports. You have come with your pain. You have come with all kinds of oppression. You have come with all kinds of closed heaven. And you're saying, Lord, if you are the only one I know who can help me, let me tell you, your coming is faith enough. Did you hear what I said? You're leaving your house to come is faith enough. It's true. Like a patient goes to the hospital. Once you are in the hospital, just leave the rest to the doctor. Then the doctor begins to prescribe. And this is what is happening to us. An extension of the ministry of Jesus. Let's look at one scripture. Mark chapter 1, 21. Mark chapter 1 and verse 21. And they went into Capernaum still the ministry of Jesus and straightway on the Sabbath day he entered the synagogue and taught it's interesting how Jesus held his crusades he would take out time not just to preach but to teach Jesus knew that 
teaching was the system for sustaining anything that the people were to receive are we together if the entire scope of ministry is just miracles alone it, it becomes volatile the people receive it and then it just evaporates but when they are taught it guides their understanding to keep that which they have received you can lose something you have received it's true you can lose healing demons can leave people and re-enter them again but when the word of god is taught it gives you the basis are we together now so jesus taught in their synagogues we're reading it's, it's a long reading let's see how far we can go just keep just continue and they were astonished at his doctrine for he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes 23 and there was in their synagogue i love jesus see how his miracle service was as soon as he just finished preaching it was time to demonstrate the reality of the kingdom and there was in that service a man with an unclean spirit and the demons began to cry out 24 saying let us alone what have we to do with thee thou jesus of nazareth art thou come to destroy us we know who you are the holy one of god and so on and so forth and jesus rebuked him saying hold your peace and come out of him this is jesus for you this is jesus for you because that man's life was obviously in shambles because there was another spirit that was cohabiting with that individual manipulating his intentions and jesus looked at him this does not reflect the kingdom and he brought that spirit out like it's going to happen to many people the forces and the spirits that are responsible for the results we do not want but keep seeing until they leave all these things are a joke when the unclean spirit had turned him he cried out in a loud voice and he came out of him 27 we're reading down to i think it was 39 or so i just want us to walk through the ministry of jesus and they were all amazed in so much that they questioned among themselves saying what thing is this what new doctrine is this for with authority he commanded even the unclean spirits and they do obey him let me tell you this when you command an unclean spirit and it goes it is a big deal did you hear what i said <laughs> doctors can treat sickness they can cast out devils machines can show an elongated lung or heart but it cannot show the spirit sitting there are you hearing what i'm saying these spirits are living entities they can hear they have a system and a structure. They were designed to respect some people and disobey some people. Are we together? They understand ranking in the spirit. So when you issue a command, as Jesus did, and these spirits are forced against their will to leave that individual and that habitation is proof of dominion. Are we together? Yes, it is. It truly is proof of dominion. Look at Jesus used this. The people were astonished. They said our priests and rabbis didn't do this. They couldn't do this. I hope you know that while all the priests used to preach, that man was in the temple and the spirits were hearing. But the words were not potent enough to force them to leave. So they kept coming service after service. May you not be a man of God that cohabits with demons. And that people come and sit under your anointing and under your meeting. And the demons that cause poverty, failure, whatever it is. You share the grace and they share the grace with you. And you go out. No, sir. Haba. What then is the excellency of light over darkness? Your presence should discomfort the gate of hell. So well that there is no pretending about it. That's why some of you bring people here. You notice you bring them and when they sit down while praise and worship is happening, they want to run away. It's not them. It's not them. The devil knows that when you come into an environment that can bring you emancipation, Satan will revolt and fight and fight again and again. But tonight the devil is a liar. It's too late. Really, it's too late. 28 
and immediately his fame spread abroad all through the region round about Galilee. And forthwith, when they were come out of the synagogue, they entered into the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Let's see what happened. And Simon's wife's mother lay sick of a fever. And anon they tell him of her. Now Jesus is healing. We saw him cast out devils. He's about to heal now. And he came and took her by the hand. I love Jesus. And lifted her up. And how, may, how long? Immediately. Immediately. Do you know if Jesus did not touch her, she would remain like that. And you would think it's the will of God. Don't trivialize an anointed hand. Goodness. Jesus walks in and says, I'm introducing something to this woman's body. That until the arrival of that thing, the condition does not change. That contact. The Bible says immediately the fever did what? That means the fever was a living thing. It could move. Abba, is it, are you not intelligent people? The fever left. Pastor Alpha left me. Before Jesus came, the fever was with her. They gave it all kinds of interpretation. Jesus, look at what Jesus did. He didn't talk. He just touched. The Bible didn't say they shall lay hands on the sick and speak. Just by making contact alone. Are you seeing that now? Some, it was about the transference of virtue. And it forced the spirit. There was a separation. That means the discomfort you feel is because there is something with you. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Yes. That means that growth, that swelling is a sign that there is something with you. Ah, but the hands of Jesus extended through us. You see that? I, I'm, I'm creating expectation in you. That means that pile would never have been piled until a spirit came in partnership with your body. And just saying pile go is not what will, will make it go. There is an agency that will separate you from that pile. You will call it a miracle. There is no reason to remain sick when the spirit has been separated. Look at it. Immediately, not slowly. So the question is not whether you can be healed. The question is whether the anointing is sufficient to separate that spirit. Because when it happens, the Bible says immediately. And she was so healed, she went straight to the kitchen. Straight to the kitchen from a bed. And he came and took her by the hand and brought unto him all that were there at even when the sun did set. Like Koinonia now, they brought unto him. That means there was an information that had reached town. That when we bring certain people to this man, there was something about him that was able to heal them. They brought unto him all that were what? Diseased. And them that were possessed with devils. See the kind of people that came to Jesus. As a man of God, if these kinds of people are not coming to you, it's not the issue of I'm not called into this ministry. Something is wrong. Because they should discern that the hand of God upon your life should function in a pattern similar to that of Jesus and should make them bring certain people. There are there are creative dimensions that his anointing can bring. Creation is needed when there is no possibility of having that reality again. Then you create it. Not everyone may be sick, but let me tell you something. Everyone needs the hand of God. There are some of us, our heavens are closed totally. And don't act as if it's not important. Nobody is favoring you. No open door. You are born again, but your life and your door and destiny is closed. Can you trust God to open this door for you? It's not by might. It's not by power. You heard the testimony of, of uh, Joy. She said an uncle who does not even call her. Something made that uncle call, brothers and sisters. Because that uncle also has relatives somewhere. Everybody who blesses you has someone in need around him. What makes him to leave them and come to you? No. Are we blessed? One question I'll ask you and then we'll begin to pray. Are you truly tired of the situation? You see, there's something 
I think I was sharing with, I can't remember who I was sharing this with. I was saying pain. It was you, Jimmy. Pain is very important. Sometimes the only way to let people see your is allow that pain. Don't stop it. Because there are people, if you have not been pushed to the wall, you will not see the need for God. For as long as there is somebody answering your prayer for you, you will not see the need to be serious. So sometimes God deliberately allows it. And that pain, the day five of your children said, Daddy, is this how we'll continue? You just get up and say, I'm coming for Koinonia today. I'm, I'm tired of this. That pain was an indication that something is wrong. And that it needs remedy fast. Pain. There are people who will never run and come to God. But you just press one side of your stomach and you just feel, ah, something is growing. What is this? Next week, the thing increased. You told a doctor, just touch it and say, ah, I don't want to tell you the name. Pain. Just say, when is that miracle service said? The power of God is real. It can produce miracles. It will produce miracles in your life tonight do you believe it i expect that not only would god heal the sick not only will he cast out devils listen carefully i expect that tonight by his spirit he will lift you out of certain captivities lack of favor delay there are some of us who are trusting god to return certain things that left your life for years whoever told you it cannot you heard the lady that said they stole her phone they came with machete and stole her phone i remember she sent me a text that they came to carry a machete foolish thieves they don't know that a body without a spirit is dead the same way you have been carrying a certificate that's the body where is the spirit component that's why you drop it on a table and they throw it in a dustbin. But when the spirit component comes, let me tell you this. God never designed a man to do anything on earth unassisted. A spirit entity must assist you. Even you, if you meet a herbalist, that herbalist is not alone. There is a spirit assisting him. You see that? Yes walk through life by your strength and power please help them life will be too hard for you this is the mystery of hardship rejecting the assistance of the spirit i would dare not do ministry without the spirit what else will i be doing but with god with god all things without him you are on your own but when you involve him and not only involve him go a step further by letting him lead the way then your life becomes a wonder i'm showing you many of you are surprised the same surprise was in the bible they were astonished what manner of man is this astonished and then the man if he's wise will tell you look i'm not alone jesus said i'm not alone all these miracles you see i'm being assisted brothers and sisters the result you see in this ministry is a product of assistance the realm of the spirit is in partnership you can't be standing here and someone is shouting outside shouting at overflow no no Habba. words are not hammer but when the spirit is upon them that word will enter you like a drug and all of a sudden you will find out that certain things will go <laughs> It will work in Zaria, it will work in Lagos, it will work in London, it will work in Saudi Arabia, it will work everywhere. Are we together? Mm. The spirits that oppress us must give way. I'm, gi I'm taking out time to charge your heart like this because I want you to receive. The most important thing is not the ministrations as it were. The most important thing is creating this expectation. Many of us come and we are just hoping. Um, okay, God, I know you will bless me. In the name of Jesus, may God lift you. Amen. I just, well, it was a nice service. And you go back and nothing happens. You keep watching people come to testify. Blessed is she that believes, the Bible says, for unto her, not unto them, there shall be a performance. 
Hallelujah. I believe the Lord. I came here full of the Holy Ghost and I came here believing with all my heart. You are sick, get ready to be healed. Don't, don't, don't say, well, let's watch and see. Get ready to be healed. You are oppressed of the devil. You may not even know you are oppressed. You just know that nothing is working in your life. I want you to be tired and say, God, will you bring me here? So especially for those of you who came so far, Lord, will you carry me and bring me here and take me back like that? There are some of you in ministry, you came to contact fire. Lord, will you leave me? Will I leave my members, my fellowship and come back here and go back? No evidence of favor. I believe him. I believe that he's a mighty man. I believe he's awesome. I have seen his hand. I have seen his power. And ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the same God yesterday, today, forever. I present to you the same healer yesterday, today, forever. I present to you the same deliverer. I present to you the one who took Joseph from the prison overnight. I present to you the one who turned Saul to the apostle. I present to you the one who turned Rahab to be part of the genealogy of Jesus. I present to you your destiny changer. I present to you your destiny maker. I present to you the anointer of men. The one who puts oil upon the head of ordinary people and changes their life. I present to you the prosperer. The one who can program a climate of favor over a man as though you are holding a child. I present to you the one who can give you influence, can lift you from nothing and make your life a wonder, a specimen, an epistle of his hand. That's the God I present to you. I have given a very nice speech. We're about to step back and allow the king of glory ride over this place and let me watch the mountain that stands before him let me watch Zerubbabel oh no no he said who are thou mountain who are thou mountain who are thou infirmity who are thou delay who are thou stagnation before Zerubbabel he said before Zerubbabel thou shalt be made plain Lift your hands, I want to pray. The Lord is starting tonight with an impartation. There is an impartation of the grace for favor. This is what the Lord is telling me. The grace for favor. The grace, I'm about to pray, for favor. Favor is a revelation that God has given me. My life is a testimony of that reality. I want to pray for you now. Believe. Believe as I pray. I stretch my hands in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare right now. Father. Even as you have revealed to me. From this main auditorium. To overflow one. Overflow two. Overflow three and those online Lord I release an impartation for the grace for favor receive it right now in the name of Jesus receive that grace in the name of Jesus receive that grace in the name of Jesus I stretch my right hand and I decree and declare step into a new level of favor step into a new level of favor Step into a new level of favor. Step into a new level of favor. Step into a new level of favor. 
Step into a new level of favor. Step into a new level of favor. We need favor in our lives. Most of the things we pray about are under the office of favor to solve. I say it again. In the name of Jesus, every challenge in your life that only the favor of God can solve, I stand before the God who has helped me and has helped this ministry. I release upon you an oil of favor. Take it now. In the name of Jesus, take favor. Take favor. Receive favor in the name of Jesus Christ. A strange dimension of favor. Favor that will surprise you. Favor that will accelerate your life. When a life, listen to me, when a life has no favor, it is clear. The proof of lack of favor is the absence of helpers in your life. Not the absence of money. You can have money. You can have intellect. You can have a job. But when there are no men in your life, you don't have favor. The proof of favor is not the coming of money. The proof of favor is the rapid response from men to attend to the issues of your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare that the men that must show up in your life to validate the grace for favor, I prophesy them upon you now. I call them by prophecy in the name of Jesus upon your business, upon your job, upon your projects. May men arise to help you. Hallelujah. There is the grace for favor. Those of you who are on the social media may have heard of a testimony that had been trending for a while. I traveled to Lagos last week and just when we got down from the aircraft on my way going, listen carefully, something is happening here. A young man just walked to me and held me and I looked at him and he said, sir, remember me. I said, well, I don't remember you. What's the story? He came here, Koinonia, with a property, his property, and carried it and gave me as a seed. I said, what for? I mean, you're a young man. What will you go and tell your wife? Brothers and sisters, from November till now, nine properties and one estate came to him. A young guy. Hamper. Is it charm? What is on you is what brings things to your life. It's not what you want. It is what is on you. In the name of Jesus, that anointing that must come on you, I declare that it comes on your head right now. It comes upon your head right now. Producing strange results. It comes upon your head right now. It comes upon your head right now. Just follow me. Some of you don't know how you need favor. You know you need favor, but you don't know what extent. I can't imagine that there are human beings that live on this earth without favor. You will never be able to be happy on earth. No. I can you check let's check our lives the truth is for many of us there is no favor it's not that the helpers are not there there has to be something on you to bring them every lifting that God has brought by his grace happened in this Zaria not London Zaria here many of us live unrewarded lives because there is nothing on you drawing men to bless you nobody thinks about you God does not talk to anybody about you a gentleman I think one of these uh, I can't remember one of these Fridays and he stood to see me after the service and he said man of God my life is hard 
can you help me with some money and i looked at him i said you are not a wise gentleman i know you need money now but you should ask yourself the person giving you the money where did it come from the wiser prayer is for favor i said let's do an experiment i told him i said i will pray for you for favor return next friday and tell me what happened if nothing happens i will give you money agreed he said yes and i prayed for him and he went brothers and sisters on monday monday that's the monday after that gentleman sent me a text and he said his uncle that he's even fighting with their father that he did a very serious transfer and told him that who helps you in school and he said nobody he said so why have you not been reaching me all of you these proud children and so on and so forth that he was going to start sending him money i said you you believe that that uncle just did it by his will listen this world is too wicked for somebody to just like you that's flattery this wicked world where a man can slaughter a child's head then what makes you believe they will just like you enough to see that you rise it takes favor can i pray that prayer for you again in the name of jesus christ the son of the living god you have done your best you have done your efforts you have struggled is almost killing you now receive the grace for favor receive the grace for favor may your life change by favor receive the grace for favor it is favor that brings resources it is favor that brings opportunity there are many gifted people there's no one to reward them there are many nice people many wonderful musicians nobody to place a demand on their grace it's so annoying when you see someone you are better than but he has favor and you don't and yet you have to say yes sir did not think Mordecai was good enough but favor and he said everywhere you see the chariots of Mordecai bow the knee Mordecai is passing yes a gatekeeper you may not like a person but when favor is on them it will veto whatever you think I pray for you again every door that must open in this season to validate favor I command it to be open now I command it to be open now. Listen. You're not going to build a house by savings. Let me tell you the truth. It's not in today's Nigeria. You're not going to buy a car by saving. No. I practice all these things. You're not going to, to settle and train your children just by saving money. You will need a grace that can accelerate your results. Otherwise, you will never be a giver. You will never. You can't be a giver just by saving peanuts, 10 naira and 100 naira. When there is a demand, life will demand so much from you that if you are not operating under favor, you will be frustrated. And that's how Satan wants to trap men. He will trap you and make your life miserable. Let's release this favor on our families. You have received it for yourself, but let it get to your family. I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ. My father, every family that is represented here by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, let there be a release of favor. Let there be a release of favor. Favor on every family. Favor on every family. Listen, sometimes eh, it is not warfare that destroys, it is even how favor works. Favor can kill to make sure that one person rises. Some of these proud relatives that make fraternities with darkness and sit upon the destinies of families and make ghosts and say for as long as we are there, you must route your success through us. If you attempt to rise without us, you will not rise. I declare that the sword of favor may it get to every family. 
and dislodge everybody who wants to be God in that family. Hallelujah. Favor. In one minute, I want you to begin to mention all the areas you want to see favor and speak. Lift your voice. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Participate. Lord, I release favor concerning this job. Pray. I release favor. I release favor. Favor concerning my building project. I release favor. Are you praying? Favor. You surround us with favor like a shield. You surround us with favor like a shield. like a sheep. Favor in my academics, pray. Favor over my job. Lord, favor, favor, favor. Hallelujah. Listen, let me tell you the truth. You see, Ba, this prayer you are praying, if this prayer is truly answered in your life, this is how you will stand. What is this? This favor prayer you see, there are people who have touched up this favor. They can tell you, favor is fearful in its operation. Is there any man in the house of Saul that I may show him kindness and they carry the crippled man I don't deserve the palace he says still come and the king said you will sit here and eat with me let me tell you how you know it is favor listen favor is not one time when somebody just says hey Jimmy I want to give you water what that's just goodness favor is I want to keep blessing you I want to continue doing this Many of us, what happens is that we mistaken goodness for favor. Someone just appears once and just says, look, I want to help you. And it never happens again. When it is favor, a process is ignited. It keeps following like that. It's true. Study the things in your life. You'll be able to separate goodness from favor. There are things that just happen one time. But favor, favor continues. So I'm seeing fire on my hands. And I want to pray because the Lord wants to bless the works of our hands. Listen, whether you are on a job or whatever it is, you see, these hands you see, they are, it's a mystery. It says, the, the hand of God, it was with this hand God made man. Are we together now? This hand you see is a symbol of your productivity and if it is not blessed it will bring struggle to you i want to pray I'm, I'm seeing fire on my hands and i want to pray because for many of us who are getting results but our results are too small i stretch these hands the fire that the lord put upon this hand in the name of jesus i release it let it come upon your hands let it come upon your hands representing your job your academics your business whatever it is that you're involved in i release i stretch my hands may that may that fire come upon you in the name of jesus christ you go back with that hand and write a proposal and it will shock you what will happen you go back with that hand listen listen believe this and pick up a document and submit and someone collects it and is under the influence of what your hand brought it's true it's true why does god do these things 
to give us rest so we can serve him why does God open doors to give you rest financial frustration and all kinds of related frustrations are strategies from Satan to distract you and make you to keep seeking things you never will truly be able to seek God when certain things have not been solved in your life it's true you can't give God your best when you are still thinking of what to eat you are thinking of what to wear but when God takes those things away your prayer life becomes worship not just hours of petition in the flesh hallelujah hallelujah overflow two there's someone the anointing of the spirit is coming on someone overflow two the overflow by the roadside bring the lady hello him Adonai thy kingdom come thy will be done overflow two the overflow by the road please quickly we have to hurry up thy kingdom come Thy will be done. Can I talk to you, madam? This woman, please tap her for me. Come. Hello, him there is a spirit that doesn't want this woman to rise. Hello, him Thy kingdom come, thy will be. The Lord is opening the eyes of your parents. I'm seeing the Lord opening their eyes to a realization of something the devil has been using. In the name of Jesus, especially for this lady, I command it so now. In the name of Jesus Christ, that every conspiracy of darkness over you and your family is hereby crushed to pieces. In the name of Jesus. Madam, I don't know who you are, but let me pray for you. There is a spirit. I look at you and I see a woman who should be walking in certain realms of favor. You love the Lord, but this is like, it's like a trap. You just cannot move and make progress. And the Lord is saying, I should pray for you. As I pray for you, madam, you will be surprised to see what happens in your life. Hold my hands. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I release this woman. In the name of Jesus Christ, I release this woman right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I release this woman. The devil has put something in this lady's stomach. This lady you are holding. I command in the name of Jesus, remove that evil you have put now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I'm about to pray. And I'm already seeing a vision of what will happen. There will be such a massive, massive, massive deliverance. Now, let it not surprise you. I've explained to you what this thing is. It's a separation. You should rejoice when it happens. Because it means that you are entering a new season. 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 A new season.
a new season someone is entering it right now a new season a new season young lady you are entering a new season a new season by the spirit a new season a new season a new season a new season, a new season. something is breaking breaking i don't need to walk everywhere i'm just walking as the holy ghost is leading me a new season something is breaking 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 a new season there is a cloud of glory there is a cloud of glory a new season no force can stand it in your life there is an anointing here there is an anointing here a new season something is breaking here right now in the name of Jesus something is breaking here in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus receive it something is leaving you something is leaving you it must go shake it take it take it take it shake it take it take it and take it new season new season I stretch my hand, something is breaking here. There's someone an anointing is coming on you. Breaking a limitation right now. In the name of Jesus. I command that spirit, leave that lady now. In the name of Jesus. from me and it will come and create that separation I want you to bring them out overflow one two three wherever in the mighty name of Jesus the God of Jeshurun I decree and declare that every force sitting on your destiny as you count three as you count Jesus at the count of three let there be deliverance one two three Let them go now. Let them go now. Shake it, take it, take it, take it. break it to Scotobata. Witchcraft, manipulations of darkness. In the name of Jesus, I command a separation through the greatness of thy power. Shall thy enemies submit? I decree. I set it as an ordinance in the spirit. I announce liberty. Liberty, bring them out.
the name of Jesus Christ if there is any family that has been covenanted to any elements of the supernatural whether the earth whether fire that people pass through fire to make ordinances at the count of three I command those ordinances set on fire one two three let there be liberation right now every family covenanted to the waters covenanted to the air to trees I set you free now map and I'm seeing or your state or your state this is the hand of God the sword of the spirit going to or your state bringing deliverance there are times that God moves this way in the name of Jesus I command whoever is from that region may the power of God begin to touch you now may the power of God begin to touch you now complete liberty complete liberty overflow three please lift your hands just watch your screen and lift your hands overflow three don't worry you you that you you don't have to bring them the distance is far overflow three just look at me i see the angels of the lord doing something there at the count of three overflow three i want you to shout the name jesus because i'm seeing swords that's what i'm seeing and the lord is bringing a massive massive breakthrough massive deliverance in the name of the lord jesus overflow three are you ready i'm seeing chains of stagnation about to leave you right now in the name of jesus everyone under any kind of oppression at the count of three shout jesus one two three hallelujah hallelujah we are going to pray for the sick shortly hold on guys hold on hold on hold on please i want to pray the lord is showing me something that is very interesting the lord wants to break cycles there are people every season certain things happen every september somebody must die every 3 3 years somebody married must divorce in the name of Jesus, lift your hands. You don't have to ask whether or not you are involved. Don't worry, the anointing will look for you. I decree and declare right now in the name of Jesus, the power that activates cycles, demonic cycles over the lives of people so that certain patterns and events keep repeating themselves. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. Call that lady back that lady lift your hands my dear God is not done with you I look at you and I see oppression there is something that the devil has put in you if I don't pray for you very soon they will start telling you you will start feeling pain they will say fibroid in the name of Jesus I stretch my hands I command that devil let her go now in the name of Jesus Christ every cycle over anyone's life are you ready to shout Jesus now at the count of three to surprise you what God will do. One, two, get ready. Three. The chain of circles. Be broken. Cycles. Cycles of failure. Cycles of miscarriages. Cycles of unfruitfulness. By the sound of the spirit. Be broken now. Hallelujah. Be broken now. 
I want to pray. Um, please, this man, I don't know who the, this man, yes, please quickly. We are soon going to pray for the sick. I may not have time to prophesy to individuals. I'm standing near this lady and I'm seeing a snake. This is what I see in the name of Jesus. I curse that devil. I'm not seeing a human being. I'm seeing a snake. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Overflow one. I'm seeing the power of God. This I just mentioned snake. And I was seeing serpents. Just moving at overflow one. Right now I'm seeing it's like a sword. Dividing those snakes. That's what I'm seeing. It's happening to people at overflow one. In the name of Jesus. Let it be over now. Snakes and scorpions. The mystery. The mystery of snakes and scorpions. He said I give you authority. Over snakes and scorpions. And all the powers of the enemy. Sir I want to pray for you. I don't know whether you came here for us. Here, you have been but, coming here uh, but i was tra i traveled before that so i have not been coming i want to pray for you yes sir if i don't pray for you the devil is going to kill you i'm looking at you and i'm seeing you inside a coffin you have already closed you i'm not a prophet of doom i want to pray for you you love jesus be careful so that they don't bring these herbal things for you huh uh, is that true yes sir Looking at you and I'm seeing them bring something for you to yes. help you. Yes, sir. That thing is a charm. Yes, it's not half it's charm. Yes. Native yes. doctor. Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, That's sir. what will even kill you. Yes, sir. It's not going to solve your problem. Yes, sir. The people doing it are well meaning. Yes, sir. But the truth is that they are going to kill you for nothing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Because you are not even responding to it the way they say you should respond to it. Yes, and you violate it will destroy you. Yes, sir. Can I pray for you? You have you have taken something in your system now that will even destroy you. Listen, let me tell you, when you are pressed, we are humans and we can be pressed to the wall. Going to the devil to get a charm is, is you are facilitating your destruction. If Satan gives you tea here, he will hold a knife and stab you at the back. Father, by the mercy of God, I pray for this man. Let him not die. In the name of Jesus, I close the gate of the grave over your life in the name of Jesus both the herbalist and the conveyor of those charms in the name of Jesus we scatter that shrine into pieces in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for you sir the Lord perfects you in Jesus name I pray something is leaving this lady oh dear she's vomiting I'm looking at her and I'm seeing something Agnes God is not done with that guy or that young man with blue please if you are not Agnes don't come here please your name is Agnes where are you from I need to pray for you I'm seeing an attack on your life. This attack is coming from Calabar. Huh? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Sir. I have to pray for you. Where are you from? Cross River. You are from Cross River? Yes, sir. Come. I must pray for you. Kai. There is somebody, the Lord is setting the person free. I'm seeing a friend going to a herbalist. And they are asking the friend to give somebody and they wrote the name of that person you are here now in the name that is above all names I'm serious don't think I'm just hyping you in the name of Jesus whoever's name has been written by any demonic friend or whatever herbalist in the name of Jesus because that person you keep seeing dead dead people you even saw yourself in a coffin in the name of Jesus, I curse that spirit now. I'm going to pray for you. And then we're going to pray for the sick right now. Ah. There is some serious deliverance. I'm, I'm seeing something happening in the realm of the spirit. This is, this is, this is a serious...
Father, let this lady be free right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Come, you, this lady, come. You love Jesus? Huh? Yes, sir. Come. You, I, I'm not condemning you, eh? Look at me. You have to be very serious with God. One, two, friends. Look at me. God has delivered you many times. You would have destroyed yourself. Huh? You're a small girl. You need to love God with all your heart. Please, be very careful so you don't go and put yourself in something that will destroy you i love you eh? i love you and that's why i'm telling you this you need you need somebody to counsel you and follow you up hmm? i'm not going to say everything i'm seeing but you have to be careful because it's god that saved you now i'm seeing something a virus anyway in the name of jesus christ father i pray for your daughter help her by the power of the holy spirit in the name of jesus christ 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 I'm standing and I'm seeing a tree and that tree is this lady and something that was planted and the Lord is saying uproot it I uproot this thing now in the name of Jesus Christ I uproot it now the Spirit of the Lord is taking me to Benway State I've never been there physically but I'm seeing Benway Benway and I'm looking and I'm seeing like a tractor pushing trees down. It's like there is a covenant that has to do with trees. In the name of Jesus Christ, if there is any family involved in this, Sheketos Kotopakariakata, I command and uprooting every tree that has not been planted, help them by my father. Every tree I see Benway State, Shekete Ketakataliakata. In the mighty name of Jesus, let there be an uprooting, an uprooting, an uprooting, an uprooting in the name of Jesus. Let me pray for you, my dear. You are a nice lady, but there's bad luck in your life. Very bad luck. And the Lord wants to help you. Father, help your daughter. In the name of Jesus Christ, bad luck be gone now and forever. In the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ, may the Lord help you. Come, my dear, let me pray for you. I'm about to pray for the sick now. Our time is gone. In the name of Jesus Christ, there are some. My spirit is heavy to prophesy, but because we have to, I want us to pray for the sick so that i can just make those declarations we may not have time for one-on-one -on -one prophecy but i'm telling you god wants to touch touch a lot of people my dear i want to pray for you in jesus name the lord is rolling away the reproach in your family rolling away the reproach in your family in the name of jesus my dear look at me you are entering a new level of lifting you that's what I'm praying for you for. I'm seeing an angel pouring oil on your head. And the Lord is saying, I should tell you that is a new level of lifting you. This lady looking at me. I prophesy it over your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Who is this? Who? Agnes. Agnes. Where is she? Abuja. Abuja, sir. Your sister? Yes. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for this lady. Where is she? Abuja, sir. She loves Jesus. Yes, sir. In the name of Jesus Christ. Pray that no man will come into her life and destroy her. Eh? In the name of... Is she married? Huh? In no. the name of... Uh, whatever it is. In the name of Jesus Christ. May God help you. Mama, come. Let me pray for you. It's your season of breakthrough. Come. Is this your child? come boy come i'm looking at this boy and i'm seeing that god is going to use him this is a small boy boy how are you the, the boy doesn't even know but i'm going to pray for him samuel did not know that he will become a great prophet one day when eli he was just an innocent boy i'm going to pray for him mama please stand up i will pray for you look at me ma please don't be embarrassed but the Lord is saying he wants to take suffering from your life. This thing they call in Hausa Wahala. God wants to take it from your life. You are a very sincere woman that loves the Lord. But 
this this cause of hardship um this woman loves the lord with all her heart father you what's what's the name of this boy Reba, huh? lifted okay. your name is lifted yes father i lay hands on lifted in the name of jesus christ use him mightily we are all products of your grace lift him and use him mightily in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ mama i pray for you in the name of jesus christ and i'm telling you this the month of april is your month of strange breakthrough in the name of jesus christ the month of april is your month of breakthrough azuka come lift the camera first let me pray for you and then you keep the camera i want to pray for you because i'm seeing a big project coming for you and this project is going to lift you this is something that has to do with your snapshot but god is bringing someone it's been something you have desired that god will bring someone to open a door and truth you have been faithful you have even been serving in this house but i want to pray for you lord in the name of jesus christ lift him take him to that dimension of grace i release that anointing upon you it will no longer be an ordinary camera i call forth men that will lift you i command it so i decree and declare in the name of jesus christ open doors for you open doors for you in the name of jesus christ come this lady um sarah come there is witchcraft in your family i have to pray for you this thing is affecting everybody in the family everybody everybody not there's no exception everybody lord take away this plague of witchcraft in the name of jesus christ wonderful people beautiful ladies but all kinds of trouble from the pit of hell in the name of jesus christ i silence the voice of the accuser i silence the voice of the accuser i silence the voice of the accuser in the name of jesus christ we are going to pray for the sick now listen i know that there are a number of people who came here sick and a number of you have come trusting god for healing and miracle let me pray for this lady how many of you have your prayer request now lift it up ushers your prayer request those online make sure we collect it this this lady let me have her hands lord jesus let this trap of darkness over this family represented by this lady give way now in the name of jesus christ just hold her gently should be fine submit your prayer request quickly now we are going to pray for the sick don't allow any nonsense remain in your body no matter how small make sure you insist that it leaves make sure you insist that it leaves we are going to be very fast please we'll be very fast now let me say this when you stand to receive healing don't just stand and be staring as if you are sleeping let your heart be open are we together number two accept whoever is praying for you ask you what is wrong you don't have to say okay it is my ears or my don't worry don't worry the people praying for you have been trained and the anointing of the spirit will touch it doesn't matter what auditorium it's a corporate grace that is working here hallelujah and for all of us who are seated whilst this is happening make sure you are praying because I'm, I'm literally sensing as if I want to throw up. It's the spirit of prophecy. There's, there's something that the Lord is putting in my spirit to release. And that's why I want to pray for the sick quickly. So that we will pray this prophecy. If we do this, I'm satisfied in this service. We have to be very fast so that we'll conserve time. Hallelujah. Jesus. Someone please help with collecting the request. Make sure that even those at the extremes of the road their requests are collected please everybody father in the name of jesus we pray by the ministry of the spirit several people serving as contact points but we pray that your power and your life will touch the sick lord your people have come some of them with incurable diseases some of them with all kinds of devils i decree and declare that your anointing will prevail over every challenge let your people return with testimonies in the mighty name of jesus please be seated while you pray for a while as we pray for these people pray spiritualize yourself make sure that you are submitting your request and make sure you are praying thank you jesus 
my beautifier you have taken away the shame taking away the pain you make my life so beautiful my beautifier you have taken away the shame taking away the pain you make me just like you my beautifier
all in you. All in you. Say, my trust is in you. Uh huh. Lay on up to die. My trust is in you. Hey, ancient of days. My trust is in you. Serkin to the My trust is in you. Oh, I put them all in you.
please make sure make sure everyone's request is here in the name of Jesus February, we look to you again to surprise us. Lord, represented here are the requests of people from several nations of the world and several across this nation. In the name of Jesus, Joshua Selman cannot answer any man's prayer. So Lord, I transfer the trust of your people to you. The one who is able to meet every need and on the strength of the grace that only comes from you and in the name of Jesus Christ the son of the living God the resurrected lamb the one who is most victorious I prophesy and I turn every request here to become a testimony in the name of Jesus Lord as I walk through these requests in the name of Jesus that is exactly how your people walk through every challenge. Every challenge, every challenge. No matter what it is, I decree and declare that the grace to triumph above it is released. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Listen to me, no matter what it is, no matter what it is, provided it found its way here, in the name of Jesus Christ, the same hand that wrote it is the same hand that receives the testimony. The same hand that wrote it is the same hand that will receive the testimony. There are people who need to lack sleep for these prayers to be answered. May they lack the sleep. There are people who need to be promoted for this prayer to be answered. May they be promoted. There are agents of darkness that must be laid to rest for these prayers to be answered. May they be laid to rest. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let's pray. If they are still praying for you in any of the overflows, don't worry. You can just connect with them while I pray for you. By the grace of God, you will not write your request twice. I thought I was done but I just felt drawn again to it whatever it is that you wrote here that requires a creative miracle that means the solution is not currently in existence anywhere may the one who created the heavens and the earth create your testimony in the name of Jesus Christ I want to pray for you as long as God grants me the grace I will never stop prophesying over you it is the greatest thing I think I can do if I give a word of knowledge because I'm limited by time and I'm limited by my own understanding and my level of alignment to God I may not be able to accurately address everyone but when it comes to prophecy everyone can receive are we together now wherever you are you can receive You've heard the testimonies. You've seen the things that happen. The Bible says, everyone who speaks, let him speak according to the...
the measure of grace. There are some things this anointing can do. And let's trust God that it happens in your life. Let's pray. Lift your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that for everyone here who started this year in tears already, that from January, February, you've not known joy. I declare that as this week ends, that's how your trouble and your sorrow ends too. The Bible says, no weeping endures for a night. It says, but joy comes with the morning. I decree and declare the kind of testimony that will make you get down on your knees and say lord i've seen you bless me but not this dimension may the god i serve release it to you anyone here jobless or trusting god for a better job in the name of jesus between now and march miracle service return with your miracle job Return with your miracle job. Return with your miracle job. Anyone here due for promotion and whether based on tribal sentiments or whatever it is, you've been kept at a level. In the name of Jesus, I open the doors for you. Rise to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every manifestation of delay in your life others move forward but when it gets to your turn something just clamps you in one position or slow progress slow progress is as destructive as delay I command speed to your life I speak speed to your life I prophesy speed to your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare every advantage that the enemy has over your life in the name of Jesus this is the season where all those doors are closed forever I pray for those in business here I speak over it the grace for multiplication let it come upon your business in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for those who are trusting God to correct certain things in their lives it may be results for students it may be something it may be a mistake of the past you've seen God correct things in strange ways here I command supernatural correction for you for every student here that the result you are holding is not your real result I don't care how long in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, we correct it right here. Anyone here involved in any kind of project, building project, whatever major project, you or your loved ones, I decree and declare the finisher's anointing comes upon that project. In the name of Jesus Christ. let me pray over your finances listen let me tell you this the bible says believe in the lord your god so shall ye be established he said believe in his prophets so shall you prosper if you truly believe god will surprise you in the name of jesus christ i pray for you i give you two weeks from today in the name of jesus christ that between now and the next 14 days let something notable happen to your finances listen I don't want you to think as I'm praying you are thinking oh God will use a B leave whoever God will use to him I'm not talking business in the name of Jesus I say it again between now and the next 14 days may the lifter of men surprise you in your finances hallelujah every gift of the spirit that you had once seen in your life 
and for some reason is either depleting in the grace for dispensing it or not there again I prophesy supernatural activation right now supernatural activation right now the supernatural grace for soul winning drawing people to God a strange grace that will not give you peace until people are coming to Jesus through you I release that grace over you I release that grace over you I release that grace over you take that grace now the grace to validate signs and wonders that through your hand listen not just through Joshua Selman in the name of Jesus those hands that are stretched towards me I prophesy to you the unction to walk in strange miracles receive it in the name of Jesus the grace to reproduce the miracles in this house I release that grace young and old male or female receive it in the name of Jesus I speak over your life that as you utter words concerning the destinies of men you will watch them come to pass with your very eyes in the name of Jesus Christ whoever needs to make peace with you I decree and declare the grace of God compels them to make peace with you hallelujah whoever has been directed by God to bless you and the devil is stopping them from obeying God is not necessarily financial it may be to bless you with an information access opportunity whoever is supposed to bless and lift you and in the name of Jesus the devil wants to stop them I clear the way for your contact with them in the name of Jesus anyone here who needs an urgent breakthrough maybe something that has to do with house rent or maybe something that involves the police just something that if God does not intervene the embarrassment is going to be serious I pray that between now and Sunday the God that I serve you may not see the wind you may not see the rain but brothers and sisters may my God step in and surprise you We're rounding up. Whatever has covered the glory of God upon your face so that people cannot see and partake of that grace and also reward you, I tread that veil into pieces in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, I pray for any and everyone here suffering from any kind of barrenness in the name of Jesus Christ by next miracle service you come back pregnant I say it again by next by next month miracle service you return with your baby in your womb in the name of Jesus the spirit that makes you see what you want but never hold it is close to you you see it they promise you and say by tomorrow I will do something then in the night something happens in the name of Jesus everything your eyes have seen I put it in your hand everything your eyes have seen I put it in your hand hallelujah finally I call your destiny helpers from the north the south the east the west whether they are in this country or outside this country I don't know how God will make them meet you but I declare they must meet you in the name of Jesus they will not only meet you they will bless you in the name of Jesus they will not only bless you they will continue blessing you I multiply dreams and visions and encounters in your life 
whatever has choked away your prayer life you used to pray for two three four five hours now you pray for 10 15 minutes you are drowsy you are tired it's an attack it is an attack it is the devil you used to be consistent but right now you wake up in the night you pray for 10 minutes you are snoring back in the name of jesus tonight let there be revival upon your prayer life revival over your prayer life the appetite to study the word you once had it but it went away and for some of you you've not read your bible since last friday it's not that you don't want to the grace to make it happen is no longer there i command tonight may that fire for the word come upon you hallelujah for all your loved ones who are connected to you whether they are born again or not because you came here tonight i stretch my hand may the grace and the blessing that came to you may it get to them too in the name of jesus christ give jesus a clap Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Alaska de Basca Nakata Branda Catecatos, Cate Branda Catapa Cotosco to break a take a legata. The phase of development, Lord, grant me the discipline.